They call it the Little Apple in the middle of America. It is Manhattan, Kansas, and you're looking at Bill Snyder Family Stadium, home to the Kansas State Wildcats, and tonight they'll play host to the Texas A&M Aggies, Big 12 football exclusively on Fox College Sports. A look at the Big 12 standings. We'll start with the North Division and Kansas State, a record of 1-1 one one with their win over Iowa State, a loss to Texas Tech, and their 500 overall. Meanwhile, in the South, it's been a rough start for Texas A&M in conference play. Overall, a game above the 500 mark at 3-2. As always, alongside Yogi Roth, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to Big 12 Football on Fox College Sports. And Yogi, here we are about the halfway point of the season, and really a test for both these teams to see just how good you are midway through. Yeah, this evening's game is crucial for both programs. Neither one of them want to lose another game in conference play, and right now on offense, both of them need to move the ball to have that success. Texas A&M, great quarterback, Gerard Johnson. Gerard Johnson, you look at this guy, he has not thrown an interception thus far this season. He has the size, he has the ability to not just make plays with his arm, but also with his legs. The staff absolutely loves this player, and he has flourished thus far in his career at Texas A&M. And as you mentioned, he's very good on the ground, one of the quicker quarterbacks that you'll see, but he also has that quick trigger as well. So the question is for Kansas State, how do you stop him? Well, you got to go right to that defensive end, 95 right there, Jeffrey Fitzgerald. Last week against Texas Tech, an interception to the house for a touchdown. The transfer from Virginia, he is a bona fide. NFL prospect and will wreak havoc all evening long if they let him. Well, Bill Snyder has talked about really trying to have a very good running game, and he's got a very good running back, and that's Daniel Thomas, a guy that gets a lot of yardage, but they love to keep the ball on the ground so they extend their possessions. Yeah, 34 plus minutes a game they have the ball, and they do it through this guy, Daniel Thomas. Every element of their offense goes through this running back. So there's a look at big number eight. You'll see him carry the ball all night long for Kansas State. Now the guy we're going to talk about next, I love him. I mean, this guy is a player, and he's a playmaker on defense. A big-time player, Von Miller, a former hurdler in high school. He leads the NCAA in sacks with nine. He gets after the quarterback. He is agile. He is fast. He is athletic, and he may be acrobatic when he goes up against slower, bigger offensive tackles. Can't wait to watch him. Von Miller, he'll be on display tonight. It's the Aggies of Texas A&M, the Wildcats of Kansas State. A sea of purple here in Manhattan. Aggies, Wildcats, next. Welcome back to Bill Snyder Family Stadium, where the Texas A&M Aggies are sure glad the year is not 1971. You see, for most of the 20th century, freshmen were not allowed to play varsity football. Well, in tonight's game, Mike Sherman will be playing about 18 freshmen. Some of this is out of necessity, but some of it is because these guys are just talented players. There are a couple guys you're going to want to keep an eye on. One of those is the running back, number 33, Kristen Michael. And another one of those on defense is the linebacker, number 11, Jonathan Stewart. Now, when I talked to offensive coordinator Nolan Cromwell this week, he said that a lot of youth and experience on the O-line is causing some problems. One of those things is that they're having to run the ball out of the shotgun instead of under center. That's going to be an issue tonight, so keep an eye on that left tackle position that they haven't solidified. The name of the game in tonight's game is going to be simplify. Both of these teams need to simplify in order to let their guys just play. For A&M, it's about that youth and inexperience. For Kansas State, Bill Snyder told me that last week they got exposed because they were trying to do too much. Well, if you have something to say about any of this throughout the game, jump on Twitter and follow me at Sam on FCS. Let us know what you're thinking. We want you to be a part of the broadcast. We'll be back with kickoff right after this on Fox College Sports. Live gets you highlights from every Big 12 matchup. See the big plays and hear from the big playmakers. Wrap up your Saturday night with Big 12 Live on Fox Sports Southwest. Big 12 football on Fox College Sports is brought to you by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most are what we deliver the best. Manhattan, Kansas, the scene, it's a sea of purple. This crowd is fired up, but they have returned home after a rough, rough road test last week against Texas Tech where the Red Raiders put up 66 on the board. So back home for four of their next five. A&M leads 8-5 in this all-time series, which began back in 1912. And the Wildcats 21-19 against the Big 12 South. 
Now Kansas State did win the toss. They declined to receive, so they'll kick it away here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. There's a look at Mike Sherman, the former head coach and GM of the Green Bay Packers. Second season at Texas A&M, 59-43 and 0 as head coach of the Packers from 2000 to 2005. On the other sideline, a familiar face for college football fans. There he is, the 70-year-old Bill Snyder, 18th year at Kansas State. 139-71-1 record, and he's 25-19 and in October since 1996. And Yogi, of course, we talked about it a couple of weekends ago. One of the great all-time stories in college football, Bill Snyder. Yeah, he is. I got a, got a chance to spend about 30 minutes in his office the other day with Samantha. It was exciting. He was electric. He is the type of guy who is very fired up for the opportunity which exists today. And the kickoff will be fielded at the 6. It's dropped initially and then take it to the outside. Watch out here. One man to beat to the outside. And he'll be brought down at the 21. That's Gray of Texas A&M. So I feel this predictions, and this is presented by Phillips HD. That's right, number one, you got to compete at the line of scrimmage. Up front for Texas A&M, they are young, and that's been their issue all season. Two, they got to protect the football. They haven't thrown a pick yet, and they want to continue to go down that path. And three, the youth, mo the youth movement, it's their first time on the road. How are they going to react? It's their first flight, their first trip. What are they going to do in this environment? Yeah, they had a neutral game in Dallas, but this is their first true road test. This is uh, the young quarterback, a very good one, rolling to his right. We talked about his feet being a difference in this ball game this evening. And he's only a sophomore out of Katy, Texas. And that's Gerard Johnson, excuse me, the junior Gerard Johnson. You see second in the Big 12 with what he's done. And a handoff. A short gain and then a fumble. Kansas State says they've got it. They do. The first thing we talked about in the fearless predictions, protect the football, compete at the line of scrimmage. Right there, that was a loss up front, and you cannot give the ball away specifically in your own territory. Right there, it's just a simple matter of effort and a great job by that defensive line of Kansas State of a tackling, tackling the football. When you do that, good things will happen, and right now for Kansas State and their offense, they have the opportunity to have the football going in in the 30-yard line in the red zone and get some points on the board early. That is only the fifth fumble and turnover by Texas A&M the entire season. So their five turnovers have been with the fumble. We're not really sure who might start at quarterback, and uh, I know that's been kind of a, a subject that's been uh, talked about ad nauseum around here, and that's uh, Gregory gets the start tonight. And our fearless protection, uh, prediction is brought to you by Phillips TV. For Kansas State, they need to slow the game down. Their time of possession, 34-plus minutes a game, continue down that path. Win on third down, shut down Texas A&M's money players. And three, stop the jack-of-all-trades, Von Miller, who we touched upon in the open. And they'll hand it off. This is Thomas who cuts it up in the middle. And a short gain on second down now for Kansas State. K-State has registered 14 points off 11 turnovers. So they have capitalized, but not as much as they need to. There's a look at uh, a young man that has a six-year granted to him. That's Grant Gregory. And he's a guy that uh, transferred from South Florida. His first college start was the game that we did two weekends ago at Arrowhead against Iowa State. He was 16 for 23 in that game. Third down here for Kansas State. Gregory, little play action. Fires and caught inside the 10 and a first down. That's Banks, the speedster. First in goal now for the Wildcats. That is a great job by the quarterback when you look at what he can do. It's a simple play action. His read is low to high. He looks to the flat first. If he has it, takes it. If not, take a peek to number 83, Banks, dealing on the corner out. He said his favorite route is throwing a corner, and you saw that early in the game and expect to see it again. Well, Banks, third in the Big 12 and 15th in the NCAA in all-purpose yards. Six to nothing, Kansas State, Thomas. And just like that, a seven-yard run. And the Sea of Purple loving it here in Manhattan. 
Got a chance to spend some time with Frank Gregor earlier this week, and he said it's important we get off to a good start, not only throwing the football, but running it. And Thomas is the man that can do it. Every element of this offense will go through number eight, and that has occurred thus far in their first drive, which was a scoring drive at Kansas State, and they're faithful. They are fired up at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. So four plays, 29 yards after the turnover by Texas A&M. Extra point, up and good. Daniel Thomas, the former JUCO quarterback, signed with Kansas State in 2008. He's now in their backfield. And the Wildcats, with his seven-yard run, lead it 7-0. Daniel Thomas is a load, 6'2", 230 pounds. He makes it 7-0 with his seven-yard touchdown run. Kansas State 2-1 and one this season when scoring first. And there's a look at the recap, four plays, 29 yards. We talked about a Yogi. This is a young team on the other sideline for Texas A&M. That really comes into play, and all of a sudden you've got 60 to 65,000 into this game, and you're trailing now 7-0. Yeah, if you're a young team, not only 18 freshmen starting, but 35 players out of the 73 that have played thus far made their debut some point this season. For a young team on the road after two losses, you've got to show your resiliency and your poise in an environment like this. And the kick will be taken at the six-yard line. Big hole, now to the outside, and then collapsing there inside that 25-yard line at the 22, and a return of 15 yards for Gray. So let's take a look at our lineups and who stands out on that big offensive line. Well, you got to look right to the middle there, Kevin Matthews, the senior. He's got the lineage. The Matthews name has played all throughout the National Football League in a variety of decades. At the receiver position, you really got to like their freshman, number seven. We'll be calling him easy all night long because he's making it look easy as a true freshman for a and Working from the shotgun now, and you mentioned Kevin Matthews starting his 18th straight game. Dad... Grandpa, uncle, cousin all played in the National Football League up front. They want to throw again to the sideline. Oh, it's almost intercepted. Great job defensively. And that was Joshua Moore who almost picked it. When you're looking at this quarterback, Johnson, he has most of his success throwing to the outside, those outside lanes. And right now, you're looking at number four, the corner for Kansas State, getting a good jump on the football. Obviously been told that all week. And there he is again. Nice play defensively, Joshua Moore. And by the way, let's go back to Gerard Johnson. He's thrown now 213 passes in 2009, the quarterback for Texas A&M. And with one more attempt, he'll break Todd Reesing's Big 12 single season record of 214 without an INT. So gives you an idea, this guy protects the football. He does a nice job, and he's getting more and more comfortable in this offense. Remember, it's West Coast concepts in the spread offense, a very unique element in the Big 12. From the shotgun to the sideline, and it is caught in a first down picked up by Texas A&M. Catch made by Matt Weichs, the 6'2 senior out of Conway Springs, Kansas. Defensively, who stands out for you up front? Well, at number 95, Jeffrey Fitzgerald, the transfer from Virginia. He has wrecked havoc all season long and is finally coming into that leadership role on that defense all across the board. And you see the secondary, Joshua Moore, very good one. They'll run the football, the no gain that time for Texas A&M. As they picked up that first down, they're trailing now 7-0, and we're just underway here in Manhattan, Kansas. When you're Mike Sherman and calling these plays on offense, you love having your quarterback, because as you saw two plays go, he can make every throw. The throw across your body on a comeback route, about a 40-yard play entirely, is not easy to do. This is Johnson again from the shotgun. Watch out, over the middle, incomplete. Looked like they blitzed one of the linebackers, causing a little havoc up there, and he was trying to get Jamie McCoy. Now, McCoy, who wears number four, is listed as a tight end, but the last couple of weeks, Mike Sherman has put him in the backfield and even has given him uh, the ball as a fullback. Yeah, it's a role that he loves. Remember, he came in as a dual-threat quarterback as a true freshman, moved to receiver, and now he's in that hybrid position. Johnson to throw to the sideline, almost intercepted again. And that was Joshua Moore. How about Joshua Moore? He's ranked as the fifth best tackler in the Big 12 in conference games. 
in 2008 at 57 tackles in the Big 12 last year. He is their best and most experienced corner by far. He makes a lot of plays, and he almost made two early picks in this game. Well, when you kick it away, if you're Texas A&M, you get concerned because Banks is back there, and he has got all-world speed. He wears number 83. It's a short kick. Banks comes up to field it. He touches it. That's a live football, and there's a flag on the play as well. Look like the A&M cover guys got a little too close to the return man on that one first two games of the season the Aggies were assessed 30 penalties for nearly 300 yards kick catch interference number three 15 yard penalty first down and since then they've only been penalized now 16 times or Mike Sherman, who, of course, has that pro background. And we take a look here for Banks. Sometimes when you're a young team on the road, you get a little giddy. You get excited. You want to shut the crowd up. You want to come out and do things that are maybe outside of your element as a player. You have to just play the game. Do what you've done all week long in practice. And that is what Mike Sherman is telling all of his young players as they're kind of have to withstand a few issues early on in this game. Gregory swings it to the right side. And a pickup of four on the play going back to Mike Sherman. Now seven of his ten assistants have NFL playing or coaching experience. So as I mentioned, very much a pro style for Texas A&M. The lineup's presented by HD, who stands out up front. Well, up front, they've got a lot of big guys that have played a lot of football. But that center, Way Wilbert, he does a nice job. The transfer from Butler, Butler County Community College. So there's a look at the starting lineup for Kansas State. They lead it 7 to nothing, following the early turnover. Gregory with two men in the backfield. They're showing blitz. He'll swing it out to the left flat. Nice catch. Sidestep. Still on his feet. Picks up the first down. Boy, that's the quick beat there of Thomas. And we talked to Mike Sherman, and we asked him about Daniel Thomas. And he said he has good size. Great feet and great vision. Well, we saw the feet there. Oh, yeah. And remember, he came in as a quarterback. He's not a traditional running back. And for to be Gregory and make that swing pass, you've got to put it right on his front number just for your average back. But you have a little wiggle room with the athlete that Thomas is. First and 10 for the Wildcats. With their tight end in motion, play action. Gregory rolling right, wide open. Hits the man. Watch out, Banks. First down inside the 35. Well, he was quick, didn't he? Oh, he is. He does a great job. He makes plays with his hands, with his feet. He calls himself electrifying. Got to cover him a few weeks ago. He had an excellent game against Iowa State. He runs sub 4-3. Junior college kid from Bakersfield. He said, I don't listen to any critics. I go out and play, and I'm going to fall all season long and prove that I'm one of the more electric players in the country in the Big 12 Conference. Yeah, he's Big 12 and All-American candidate this year. He's also part of that Bolitnikoff watch list. So that gives you an idea of where he ranks among some of the best in the game. A pickup of four on the play. Let's take a look at the Aggies defensively. They're on the verge of all of a sudden really really falling behind here early on it's already seven nothing just over nine minutes to go and that's a look at their defensive line Hodges very good linebacker you see him then uh, there on the outside where's number 37 and a look at their secondary as we talked about it is a very very young group on both sides of the football yeah their safety Jordan Pugh didn't play last week due to a concussion he said yeah, I'm so hungry to go play a little bit more football and lead this secondary one man in the backfield that's Thomas this is Gregory from the shotgun He'll keep it himself with a play action. Not much of a pickup there on second down. So big third down here. And third down is where Texas A&M has done well this season and where Kansas State has struggled. And third down conversions. Kansas State is 11th in this conference, only converting 35% of their third downs. Remember, their offense is revolving around the running game and eating up the clock. And they make big plays in the passing game. They don't have much of an intermediary game right there. Seven to ten yard plays. Third down and six on the 27. 
Kansas State trying to pick up their 110th first down of the season. Gregory looking for somebody. He'll go end zone and pass interference. Banks was tied up with the defender. That'll be pass interference. And I believe that'll be Jordan Pugh who just returned. As you talked about, Yogi, that is who wears number 25, Jordan Pugh. He's back pass in that lineup. Defense number 25. 15 yards, 17 first down. And Yogi, this is a great challenge for him because it ended that streak of 29 consecutive starts. Pew, the senior out of Plano, Texas, he's second among active players with 151 career tackles. Banks and Pew, that matchup should be fun to watch. Yeah, it should be, should be fun. When you look at Pew, he calls himself the most accountable player in that defense. He knows what his responsibility is with all the young people they're playing and how they need to stop their opponent from scoring points, kind of stop the bleeding. Last week, he said his hunger, he, he feels it again. He needs to get on the field, and he was a little too aggressive on that play. Kansas State has scored on 15 of 21 trips inside the red zone. And, of course, when you talk about the Wildcat, well, Kansas State knows a thing or two about the Wildcat. Yeah, they do. The entire offense is going to go through number eight. They're going to ride him until they lose or until they win. And right now, he is falling forward. He's making athletic plays, and he's coming off a little bit of a, a knee injury last week. He caught a pass, a 52-yard gain at Texas Tech in the third quarter, came out. But he looks pretty fresh and sharp thus far early in the game. This is Daniel Thomas, his numbers on the season. Ball on the eight-yard line. Second and six. Thomas gets the call again. And a good job of the uh, defense to string the play out and a third down. You're going to see Joe Kind, the D coordinator at Texas a and pressure all day knowing they need to stop the run. If they stop the run and force Kansas State to throw the football, he believes that is their greatest chance to win this football game. Third and four with the ball on the six. Grinding it out. You see the time of possession for Kansas State, and much of that due to the fact that man, they've talked about lapses with their defense, and you don't have to worry about defense if you're on offense. So third and four right here. Gregory to throw. Looking end zone and incomplete. Trying to hook up with his tight end, and now Bill Snyder has a decision here, and I'm sure at home, already up by seven, you'll take some more points. Yeah, and this has been their issue all season long, though. They haven't been able to finish drives. They've gone inside the 20 numerous times thus far and had to settle with a field goal or a missed field goal. Their kicker, he has not had a very successful year. Josh Cherry, he's only two for seven on the season, so this is not a guaranteed three points right now. Yeah, his first career field goal was just uh, this year against UCLA, and that was a 26-yarder. The junior cherry, the kick is up, and it is good. Ten to nothing. Kansas State, quite a start. Back at home at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Wildcats 10, Aggies nothing. Big 12 football on Fox College Sports. Wildcats a 10-0 lead here at home. If you're looking for the inside scoop on your Kansas State Wildcats, find it all at kstatefans.com and immediately access news, inside info, and all the latest on recruiting. Check out kstatefans.com right now. We'll check in with Samantha momentarily and Yogi. I know you pointed this out, and it's been a concern for the coaching staff of Texas A&M. Their quarterback you know, just getting set and making throws. You're a former quarterback coach. It's something you always look at. Yeah, when you look at Johnson, he doesn't really set his feet on all of his throws, but it's nothing to be paranoid about. They know that happens, and in fact, they don't mind it because it allows him to play within his game and utilize his feet and his mobility. So they'll kick it away. It's a 10-0 lead for Kansas State. Fielded at the 9. And brought down at the 25. So Texas A&M trailing 10 nothing. We'll have it on offense. Let's talk a little bit about their defense with Sam. Sam, what do you have? Guys, if you remember when we sat down with Bill Snyder yesterday, we asked him what you do about Vaughn Miller. And he said, well, maybe he'll be in violation of something and won't be able to play. Now, obviously, he was kidding. But so far, the story has been that Vaughn Miller hasn't been much of an issue. They're sliding that line to him, doubling him. Every time he's coming, they're running the play the opposite way. So, so far, so good. Back right. up to you. OK, Sam, thanks. He's on pace for 22 sacks this year. So there's no doubt when you game plan, you watch out for Von Miller. 
Little play action, nicely done, out of the backfield. Oh, almost a tremendous catch. That sideline by Kansas State, it's incomplete. It'll be second and 10. And again, that's what you're talking about right there, the happy feet of Johnson. Yeah, and that's, when you do that, balls are going to sail on you or they're going to tail and fall into the dirt. And right now, thus far this evening, the balls have either been too high or been too low because he hasn't set his feet. There's nothing wrong with getting out of the pocket, but when you do, be quick, but don't be in a hurry and set your feet and make a throw. Three wide receivers to the top portion of your screen. Changing plays here. Play clock is at five. A handoff and they'll go nowhere. Number 33, Tristan Michael on the carry. Michael for loss by number 97. Bata, who is 6'4", 300 pounds, shed his man here and made the play. Yeah, and you'll see right now, the reason they ran this play is Tannehill's in the game at receiver. And whenever he's in at wide receiver, the former backup quarterback, or the current backup quarterback, the former quarterback at Texas A&M, they usually throw to him down the seam. They tried a little trick creation, didn't really work with the run. So third down and 11 here. Johnson flush from the pocket. He'll be brought down. And the sack inside the 10. Jeffrey Fitzgerald is a senior transfer. He sat out of... Last year, for K-State, transferring from Virginia, he was a freshman All-American in 2006. Right now, the quarterback, Johnson, is not finding any rhythm. And defensive coordinators, Chris Kosh and Vic Coning, they came from Maryland and Clemson, where they pressured a lot in the ACC conference, especially when you see a new quarterback who can run. You do not want to give him lanes and sit back in coverage. You want to attack him, and that's what they've done thus far in the first quarter. Now Ken Wood has to kick it away, and it was almost blocked. Banks with a lot of room here. He'll field it at the 45. Watch out. Oh, what a block. There he goes. And then he is wrapped up and brought down via the helmet. And so that's an easy call and a flag on the play. What a hit, though, on the return. They have not had much success in the punt team for Texas A&M. They've tried the rugby. They've tried your traditional punt. They have not had success. And when you kick it in, it bounces. If you give it the returner the chance to pick it up on the bounce, look out. That's when big plays happen. Personal foul. Place mask, number 26. Half the distance. Oh, first down. We could see that up here. Ken Wood. And you'll see it once again. That was uh, the punter, Ken Wood. The face mask in a vicious tackle. And a return that time of 23 yards. But with the penalty, it'll now be first and 10. And the ball is on the 11. What a start here for Kansas State. The Wildcat again. Thomas faking the throw, dragging the tacklers to the five-yard line. The great thing about the Wildcat is that you can expand on it every week. You want to start with one or two things and do really good at it. But then you find the athlete who feels comfortable in Thomas. Hey, let's try one of these. Let's take the pass and see what we can do and find a seam and let this guy go to work. Right now, if you're Texas A&M on defense, you need to stop number eight every single down and force them to beat you throwing the football, whether it's by pressure or just different schemes up front. Find a way. Thomas again, lunging forward, short of the first down. They have to get to the one-yard line for the first down, and of course, the end zone for the six. Well, let's not forget about this offense. They're always checking to the, to the sideline. They have the ability to audible. What does that mean? Samantha touched on it earlier. They have the ability to go away from that big defensive end and run away from him, away from pressures, set their offensive line to him. They can make those adjustments from what they're seeing up in the booth. And thus far, doing a great job by Nolan Cromwell, or excuse me, by Dana Demel thus far on that, with that staff. And the ball is on... The three-yard line, two yards shy of a first down. Little option play, yes, six. Second touchdown for Thomas, 16 to nothing, Kansas State. 
Whenever you see the option, I'm sure everybody's sitting at home saying, someone has the quarterback and somebody has the pitch man. You all, that's how you teach stopping the option. But right there, the outside defender, the corner, he went with the receiver and he did not protect the outside lane and it was a walk for number eight, Daniel Thomas. A good job by the defensive end tackling the quarterback. Nobody had the pitch man. All season, first quarter points totaled 26 this year for Kansas State. Already with 3.31 to go, they have put up 17 here at home in Manhattan. Rolling tonight early on against Texas A&M. Wildcats 17, the Aggies nothing. Big 12 football on Fox College Sports. 17 to nothing, Kansas State leads Texas A&M, 334 to go. First quarter of play. Well, you've seen her talking with fans around the stadium. Now chat with Sam anytime, right now on Twitter with the username Sam on FCS. Sam will be tweeting all season long, letting us know uh, what she's working on and discussing the latest in the college football ranks. So just log on to Twitter.com and follow Sam right now. When you look at this AM team, this is a crucial moment. They have not been in this situation. Yeah, they got blown out by Arkansas 48-19, but it was 14-10 in the second quarter. They were going in on the 10-yard line before it got out of hand. With a deep kick, fielded in the end zone, and they'll take a knee. They'll have it first and 10, the ball on the 20. Now, Yogi taking the inside the other sideline. And that huddle right now with the offensive unit that Mike Sherman is trying to put together something positive. What needs to happen? They need to have one good play and then another good play and just do things right. So much when you have a young team and young personnel, when games can kind of get out of whack and you try to do your own thing. I need to make an acrobatic play, a better block. Just do what you've done in spring practice, in training camp, and thus far this season. It will be okay, guys. There's a lot of football left. It is a pro-style offense, and Johnson will throw on first down. That's exactly how you get back into it. Throw slants, throw hitches, basic fundamental football. That's uh, easy, but uh, his last name is Wachiku, and it's spelled N-W-A-C-H-U-K-W-U. -U. Have fun with that. He is a freshman they are very excited about as they get this tempo going on offense. They have four touchdowns against Utah State. Second down, they lost a yard or two, and this crowd will come alive once again on third and probably about three, maybe four. Right now in this offense, you make a completion, you want to come right back with the next play. Remember, AM, they're averaging 86 plus plays per game. They've got to find the rhythm. And quickly, they'll pick up the first down on third down. They sped it up that time. Yeah, they did. And that running back, that true freshman, Kristen Michael, he has the ability to do that. Give him the ball. They're very excited. The number four rated back coming out of high school who has kind of found his role in this offense a little bit more every week. The 73 players have seen game action this year for Texas A&M. You see the total yardage. All Kansas State so far. Two and a half to go. First quarter of play. Whoa. Right through the middle and a big time hit. If you have a high tempo offense, you've got to get the next play, get in the line of scrimmage, and let's go. If you're looking at this young team on Texas AM, they're hanging their heads a little bit after they get hit in the mouth. When that happens, you've got to suck it up and play a little tougher, play a little more football for these young guys. And maybe the first time they've been in this environment, down 17 0, they came from programs where all they did was win and have success in high school. They've got to follow the leadership of their staff and the seniors on that offensive line. There aren't many of them. John Hulick with the stop, the linebacker, his 36th career game tonight. Over the middle, and the catch is made. He fired it into traffic. That's and a good the job. catch made by the young man that we've talked about as well, Jamie McCoy, who's a tight end, also slash fullback. Now watch the quarterback here. He sees his read, he goes through his progression, he sets his feet and makes a throw. A strike to number four, a player they love to utilize who has the ability to score anytime he touches the rock. He's on the Mackey Award watch list. And on third down, they'll come up short. And we've seen that Mike Sherman on third down, Yogi. 
wants to speed it up and not let Kansas State maybe get set defensively with substitutions and also not let the crowd come into it. At that time, it didn't pay off. No, they tried to get the edge, and they tried to do it against Jeffrey Fitzgerald. It's not going to work, especially if you try real quick, unless you're bringing a receiver in motion, to just trust your right tackle to get his hands on that monster defensive end. You're not going to win that battle all the time. What a good punt this time. Backing up Banks to the 11-yard line. Here he goes. And he's still on his feet. Still on his feet and almost broke it. So Banks' is short return. And college basketball fans, it is here as the college game started last night for many teams. And uh, it's your chance to win a trip for two to the U.S. Virgin Islands this November. It's the Paradise Jam. FCSParadiseJam.com to enter your name at the 2009 Paradise Jam sweepstakes. One lucky winner will win a three-night trip for two alongside complimentary transportation and some spending cash as well, not to mention tickets to all the Paradise Jam uh, ball games. And it's where hoops meets heaven. And trust me, it is. We were at the, the Virgin Islands last year, and there's an injured special teamer there for Texas A&M. And I believe that is Sean Porter. And it is. Sean Porter is down. He tried to get up, and the staff told him to stay down. But going back to the Paradise Jam, we had UConn there last year, San Diego, Miami, and Wisconsin, some of the top teams in the country. And uh, hope you can join us. Porter took a shot right there, a clean shot, but one that never feels good as you don't see it coming. And out of nowhere, the freshman gets welcomed to Manhattan, Kansas in Oof. a rude way. So with 36 seconds to go, Kansas State with a 17-0 lead. They'll have the ball deep in their own end. And again, if you'd like to find out more about the Paradise Jam and to get tickets, fcsparadisejam.com, fcsparadisejam.com. So Porter is up, and that's good to see. He's just shook up. Yeah, he is. Now, if you're Kansas State, you need to be happy with obviously how you're running the football. But also Grant Gregor, he is managing this game, making throws when he has to, getting the play in, keeping this offense very rhythmic while still doing what they've set out to do, which is chew up the clock, don't let that defense tee off with a bunch of pressures, and take advantage when they want to bring a little heat. And they'll hand it off to Thomas, who's spinning. Those are unique plays right there. As you noticed right there, they pulled one of their offensive linemen. Now Thomas, who isn't a traditional running back, has a big offensive lineman in front of him who he has to follow versus the traditional zone reads where he gets to find his lanes and his holes and either cut back or, boom, hit the hole as fast as he can. And the first quarter will come to a close, and it can't happen fast enough if you're Texas A&M getting thumped on the road thus far. Kansas State set the tone, forcing a turnover and putting it in right after that four plays later for the first touchdown of the game. Then they had the field goal. The big return by Banks set up another score. It's added up to 17-0. The Wildcats over the Aggies. You're watching Big 12 foot. Started the second quarter presented by Phillips. 17-0 Kansas State leading Texas A&M. The Big 12 Conference on Fox College Sports. Yogi Roth alongside, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Samantha Steele down on the sidelines. This is second and eight. Gregory keeps it himself and brings it out to the 20. And Sam, we saw an injured Aggie on a special teams play. What's the uh, status of that Aggie? Yeah, you saw Sean Porter go down out there, guys. And at first, they're telling me that it's his right hip. He's up moving around now. I think more than anything else, he just got his bell rung. And he did take quite a hit. There's no question about that. It's third down and two now. The thing that stands out to me, Yogi, is that Kansas State gave up over 700 yards last week to Texas Tech, and in that first quarter play, 26. It's a credit to the staff of saying, let's move on, forget about it, and go to the next game. And in fact, they didn't have the greatest week of practice. Timeout, Kansas State. So K-State takes first a timeout. Time out of the half. They didn't have the greatest week of practice. In fact, yesterday, they practiced on Friday. Traditionally, they never do that. They had pads on, they went through an hour workout just to get a little more crisp. 17 nothing in a big third down upcoming when we come back as you can see a real big crowd here in manhattan kansas kansas state a 17 nothing lead 
How well do you know college football? Play Fox College Pick'em and challenge fans of your favorite school or invite your friends. Play with or without the spread in all top 25 matchups. Go to foxsports.com slash fantasy and play today. Aggies will start on their own 19, trailing by 17. Play action, good time here, looking deep. Incomplete. You mentioned that during the break for Mike Sherman, this is really a, even though he's down by 17, on both sides of the football, this has been a pro style type game. Yeah, it is. Grind the football, pound the rock, take a few shots down the field just to stretch defenses win the game with your defense and see if you can have some success offensively. This is where him and his staff feel comfortable. Remember, that staff of his, 47 total years of NFL experience. This time they'll hand it off on second down and a short pickup. Now we talked to Mike Sherman about this weekend and about facing Bill Snyder. Interesting, he said, when I was watching Coach Snyder's teams, when I was in Green Bay, GM and head coach, we go through draft meetings, and he said one thing that always stood out, good special teams, hard-nosed players, and quickness. And Bill Snyder's trying to get back to that point again. Work from the shotgun here on third down. Nearly picked off. And that's the second time that it's been in and out of the hands of Joshua Moore, the defensive back. Johnson is not having a good night, obviously, but he hasn't gone to his number one target on third down, which is Tannehill. He's been in the slot. He's played a little bit on first down thus far this evening, but hasn't gotten him involved. And when you look at what he's doing from a quarterback perspective, he is looking at one receiver and not coming off of him. And right now he's giving a tip to those defenders of Kansas State. So Johnson, now three of nine. Banks backing up. Good kick here. Fair catch called for. And taken at the 33-yard line. Big 12 football from Manhattan, Kansas. The Wildcats have it. When we come 17 zip. Kansas State on top and with the football. Looking for the inside scoop on your Texas A&M Aggies. Find it all at AggieWebsiter.com and immediately access news, inside info, and check out the latest recruiting news. Check it out, AggieWebsiter.com right now. It's a good site. They love their site. They love their defensive end. They said after every sack, they want to hear us saying, he seals the deal. But thus far, Von Miller has not done much. And a flag on the play, bottom portion Dead of your ball. screen. False start offense, false number start 81. On the wide Five receiver. First down. You played wide receiver. That can't happen. No. Hey, wide receiver, you should never even care what the cadence is. You are always looking inside at the football, going on the ball. It's just a lapse in mental judgment. It's one of those mental mistakes that teams like Kansas State can have, but that's the growing pains of the discipline they're having to learn under Bill Snyder and his return. Unfortunately, that was a senior that made that uh, play, Snipes, and he's been lifted from the ball game and now standing on the sideline. So it drops him back to first down and 15. Gregory looking, has a man, the big tight end, caught inside the 30. Jaron Mastro, the tight end from Beaverton, Oregon. A real nice job by this quarterback. You see Vaughn Miller squeezing down on that run fake. That's what happens when you have success running the football. He gets his hat on the quarterback, but still a big time play. They've been setting it up all evening on the rollouts. They haven't covered the tight end on the backside, and that's what happened. A great job by the quarterback of keeping his eyes downfield. That's the one thing we came away from the Iowa State game with is he does a nice job of looking downfield and an excellent job there. And the tight end now, the 10th player in K-State history with 100 receptions. Gregory still on his feet. Gregory. Short of the first down and tackled at the 19. Gregory is one of those kids you love to talk to. He understands the game. Why? Well, his dad's a coach. His dad was at South Florida. His dad is now in Alabama coaching at one of the schools down there in Northern Alabama. He does a nice job and he understands the game and how you need to manage it and take your shots and take your chances and get down and find your gaps and find your holes and find your rhythm as a signal caller and it's allowed him to have success thus far. You see uh, Gregory this season tonight, he is six for eight. That pitch and catch to the tight end went for uh, 45 yards and he's thrown for 97 yards so far. Play clock at one. 
And did they get it off? I guess they did. Gregory calls his own number and picks up a first down for the Wildcats. Boy, that was awfully close to being at zero on the play clock. Gregory said he wants to be a coach just like his dad, and you've got to make you know, decisions sometimes when the clock is winding down as a coach and also as a player, and he did it right there. A nice job. An interesting fact about them, I said, tell me something nobody knows about yourself. So I can name every stadium and its capacity <laughs> in the entire country. And, and I tested him. He did a nice job. So it's first and 10 with the ball on the 14. Gregory again keeps it himself. We weren't sure. I mean, the big talk, at least offensively with Kansas State, has been either Carson Kaufman, who is a quarterback, and uh, also Grant Gregory, who is a six-year senior. Bill Snyder trying to rebuild a program. Do you go with a younger guy? Do you go with a guy that will not be here uh, next year? But, uh, you know, Bill Snyder said, look, we're trying to win games this year. And Gregory's mentally tough. He said he didn't know until an hour before the game in the Iowa State game that he was going to start a quarterback. We didn't know even five minutes before the game who was going to be the starting quarterback. They don't want to tell people, and he said, hey, and make it competitive and see how he does and we'll evaluate it from there. Thomas! Touchdown! Nine-yard touchdown run for Thomas. And what a first half he's had for Kansas State. That offensive line is having their way up front right now. I think you and I could have followed that hole right there and scored. And this is what sets up when, you're run, when your quarterback has had some success running the football. Now you've got to defend both sides of the field and up front at defensive end or defensive tackle. You do not want to have to think. You probably have a difficult time doing it anyway when you're a D lineman. You do not want to have to think. You want to react and make plays. And that right there is an absolute instance of where the coordinators did a nice job of setting up plays and understanding what to call. Daniel Thomas, 13 carries, 54 yards. And that one, folks, his third touchdown. And we still have 8.19 to go in the first half. 24 to nothing, Kansas State here at home. And a big lead here in the second quarter. If you call yourself a college sports fan, then you've got to get FCS with over 900 live NCAA events year-round in the exclusive club sports coverage. FCS, the place where college never ends. To get FCS, number to call, 877-2-GET-FCS or visit us online, foxcollegesports.com. Again, foxcollegesports.com or 1-877-2-GET-FCS. Five plays, 67 yards, only took two minutes and 29 seconds. Mike Sherman and his sideline with a young team, you're down by 24. It's one thing to lose, but you got to go down fighting, and you got to make sure that that is, is made, the impression is made on those young kids over there. Turn out to the 32. And let's check in with Samantha downstairs. Guys, everyone on Twitter was wondering who that number 53 was on the defensive line. That is not Derek Dumas, the linebacker. He didn't switch over to DN. That's Matt Moss. The numbers were coming off of his jersey. His jersey was torn, so he switched to 53. Now Dumas is wearing number 12. Back up to you. So 24 to nothing, Kansas State, with just over eight minutes to go. To the sideline and the catch made. And they'll pick up their third first down of the first half. That's it. Three first downs. Passing yards before that play at 36. And let's just see if they can't get uh, Gerard Johnson going here in some way, somehow. And the way you do it is via the quick game. Pitches, slants, quick out. Get him some confidence, some quick completions where he can set his feet and throw in a rhythm. It's the biggest thing right now for this young signal caller. Showing blitz, they'll pick it up, Johnson. Little shovel pass. And right there, that's not a dangerous play either. Still on his feet and inside the 40. You can see him looking to the sideline, gain a little confidence. This is a very young team. Cyrus Gray. Where's number 32 for the Aggies? Cyrus Gray, only a sophomore, and he's out of DeSoto, Texas. He started five games, all five games this season, coming into play tonight. Him and Vaughn Miller, high school teammates, trying to pick each other up tonight. Johnson to the sideline, tipped and incomplete. 
Tyson Hartman, Hartman. You see Jackson, the intended receiver. Tyson Hartman, backup quarterback who became the starting safety in 2008. Yep, started the last eight games. He grew up in Kansas. He loves being there. He said he's a film junkie. I love watching ball and trying to pick up on little tendencies. To the sideline, deflected, and who else? Well, what a good player he is. He broke on that so quickly, Joshua Moore. When you're not having success as a quarterback on downfield throws and only on the short, quick game, the DBs, they know it, they feel it, they sense it, they hear it from their coaches as well. They're going to squat and sit on routes and jump things as fast as they possibly can and almost dare you to beat them deep. They are two for six on third down. To the sideline, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That was Brandel Jackson, and he's a freshman from Texas. He had a TD against Arkansas, but you gotta make that play. Help out your quarterback. If you're a receiver, the unwritten rules, if it touches your hands, it's a catchable football. And when he makes a great throw from one hash all the way to the other sideline, Help him out, man. He needs a little help right now. Make that play. Fourth down. They are two for eight in this spot this year. He could take it himself. With a little room, can he get to the first down marker? Still on his feet. It'll be very close, depending on the spot. I think he got it. A nice job by him tucking and running. But I love the call. Mike Sherman, he calls the offensive plays for Texas A&M. And he's going to take risks, and he can feel his football team. He needs to give them something positive. Let them know that they have got the confidence in you. And right now, the QB talking and running is infusing that offense. So they get the first down. Johnson over the middle. It's picked off. Receiver just quit his route, it looked like. And Texas A&M has turned it over. Tannehill was there, and then the interception. And this is Hartman with the interception. He just stopped his route. Yeah, I don't know if Tannehill thought it was just going to be a, a simple 10-yard stop route, or he was supposed to break it to the crossing route, which he did not do. You wouldn't think they would be on a different page considering they sit in the same meeting rooms. Tannehill is the backup quarterback, Mr. Everything. He is their third down specialist at wide receiver. And the streak, just like that, is broken. Mm. So the first interception by Texas A&M, which they've given up the interception, and now they'll stick with the Thomas on the ground. Six and a half to go here in our first half of play. Thomas, a big first half. Daniel Thomas, 13 carries, 54 yards, and three touchdowns. If you're A&M right now, you've got to continue to pressure. Bring pressure everywhere. Try to see if your corners can match up on the outside one-on-one -on -one against these receivers and make Kaufman beat you down the field. Make him beat you in the outside lanes, down the football field, but you need to corral this back right now. Boy, that was huge, though, the interception. They finally had a sustained drive, and they turned it over. Another first down picked up by Kansas State as he'll move inside Aggie territory. That's the fourth time they ran that play. It's called a waggle pass. Why? Because you sell the run to the left and roll to your right. And right now they have gone to the right every time with this quarterback, Gregory. He likes rolling to his right. Watch him set his feet, take the first option, give it to him, and let him get up the field and rumble for a first down. It's Braden Wilson, and he's only a freshman for Bill Snyder's club. He wears number 37 there. You'll see him in the backfield at times, as he is right now. Deflected. And there's our guy, number 40, Von Miller. The first time we've really called his name when he's done something positive for that defense. Kansas State, they've done a good job of kind of isolating him away from where they're running plays and throwing the football. Right there, he shows his athleticism. Remember, high school hurdler. This guy, he looks like he could play every position on the field. The strength coach, Dave Kennedy, absolutely loves his personality, his work ethic, and everything that this young man is all about. He can get bigger, too. He's 6'3", 240. They, they think he can put on another 20, 25 pounds and not lose his quickness. Now, sometimes he'll line up in a three-point stance at the top of your screen there on his feet, ready to rush, and here he comes. They double on him, but they'll swing it to Banks. Look at those feet. How quick is that? 
Thanks. He's part of the uh, the big three they call around here at Kansas State. Averaging 12.2 per reception. His best attribute is when he catches the football, he has the ability to shift and get upfield. Catch it and get upfield. Doesn't dance a ton at receiver. In the return game, sometimes he does. But at wide he likes to catch the football, get upfield, tuck it, get as much as he can. And he's not afraid of a little contact, even, the, uh, even though he's a little guy at 150 pounds. He loves it, he says, when guys bring up his weight. 150 pounds. He's one of the three lightest players in all of college football. I mean, and, and when you're one of those individuals, you have a chip on your shoulder, and you're just, you have something to prove every week. Timeout, Kansas State. This is a 30-second timeout. So Kansas State takes their second timeout of our first half of play, and they are dominating... 24 to nothing. It's third one here. And you know, Bill Snyder wants to add on after seeing 66 put up against him just a weekend ago. Yeah, Samantha touched upon it in the open. Keeping things simple. And offensively right now, that's what they're doing. They're running their zone reads with Thomas. They're allowing their QB to run the football. And then simple play action passes and seeing what's in front of them and, and dropping it off there. Bill Snyder, one of the elite coaches ever. And this is the most win since 1990. Active coaches. Bill Snyder, of course, uh, stepped aside briefly, but he's in that uh, top six as Mac Brown added to his total at 187 today. The Longhorns in a huge game defeated Oklahoma 16-13. Thomas picks up the first down. You think about the Big 12 as a whole. You know, Texas going for a national championship. Sam Bradford back today for Oklahoma, re-injures his shoulder. Already three losses now. When you talk about the national picture for Oklahoma, it's going to be a down year, there's no question. Yeah, when you look at teams around the country, no matter what's on the front of your jersey, the bottom line is if you turn the ball over, you'll probably lose. And how does your quarterback play? That is absolutely huge. And every big-time team around the country, or really any team at all in the country, if their quarterback's gone down or hasn't played well, they've lost. It's a simple theory. And Grant Gregory, the quarterback for Kansas State, has played well tonight. 8 for 11, 124. Play action again. This has been pretty simple, hasn't it? As they go with the tight end, his 101st career reception. But a lot of play action and, uh, you know, just trying to make sure that they keep the defense on their toes, misdirection, those kind of things. Exactly right. I mean, the, the, the scheme is pretty easy. Run the football. Run it with success. If they try to stop running you from you, if they try to stop you from running the football, Go to the play action game, and that's what they've done. Now, what what their quarterback has done is only rolled out to the right, something they did not do when Kaufman was the quarterback. They went both ways. This will be second down and three. Ball on the 27. Thomas lowers his shoulder and short of the first down marker. Now, we anticipated that Kansas State Coming back home, they've got four of their next five, including tonight at home. This would be a tough test for Texas A&M. We did not anticipate this, where there is a chance they could be down by 31 points before the half is through. Uh, not at all, and I don't think either staff anticipated that. I don't know if they really knew what would happen with their teams, whether you're A&M or Kansas State. How are we both going to respond to tough losses? And, and right now with field position and being able to run the football and really own the line of scrimmage, Kansas State is proving they are a physical team and much more physical right now than A&M. And it's third down and three. Gregory keeps it himself, lunging forward. We'll see where that spot is. And whether or not he got it, you get the feeling, you know what the fans want. Go for it on fourth down. Do you think with this big lead, they probably would do so? Yeah, and with their kicker not being, you know, an extravagant field goal kicker, they're going to go for it here on fourth down. And the place is going to rise their feet as they do so. But talking to Mike Kent yesterday, the strength and conditioning coach, Samantha and I, got, and we had to spend some time with him. He said, up front, we take a lot of pride in pounding the rock and getting off the football and getting our hands on people and driving them, driving them back. And just if you focus on the line of scrimmage right now, it is being owned by Kansas State. Botch the snap, lunging forward and still. Grant Gregory picks up the first down for the Wildcats with under two and a half to go in our first half of play. You know, and you could be sitting at home saying, Wow, if I'm an A&M fan, our defensive line is, is just getting blown off the rock right now. 
but they're coming around. They're young. They're recruiting well in the state of Texas. They obviously have some defensive linemen that can make plays with Von Miller up front and, and even a couple of the other defensive linemen. So they're going to do all right, but right now they are, they are getting dominated at the line of scrimmage. With that fourth down conversion, Kansas State now 8 for 13 this year. Ball on the 23, first and 10. Daniel Thomas, big hole. Still on his feet and then brought down inside the 15. As you talked about, Yogi, up front, they're just getting beat up. You call it a surge. What's our surge at the line of scrimmage? Right now, just check out this front right here. These front five offensive linemen in their surge. They're getting off the football, which they should do because they know the cadence. But they're doubling. They're climbing a linebacker. They're allowing Daniel Thomas, who is a big back, to roar through these holes and fall forward and gain yards after yards after yards. And they are just demoralizing this defense. Ball on the 12 after another first down. And movement in the backfield in an easy call. We could see that here. The freshman. Good ball. Full start offense. Number 37. Five yard penalty. First down. It's uh, Brayden Wilson, who had a catch earlier, listed as a tight end, also moving back in that fullback position. So he jumped in. It drops him back five yards. First and 15 now. Brayden Wilson, how about this for him? 77 points in basketball. Right. Unbelievable. Uh, Athlete playing fullback, tough as nails. Pretty impressive young man. Straight out of Kansas. Just over a minute to play. Ball on the 17. Out of the Wildcat formation. Thomas still on his feet. This will be his fourth touchdown already in the first half for Kansas State. He's at another level right now. He is playing so much faster and so much more physically instinctive than anyone else on the football field right now, and he is feeling comfortable. Remember, he came in as a running back, or he came in as a quarterback. Now he is a running back. He is finally becoming comfortable. A few games into the season in conference play, he looks dynamic, explosive, and a big time back for Kansas State. So 11 plays, 70 yards, took five minutes and 39 seconds. Thomas with three 100-yard rushing games this season. Well, he already has 91 yards tonight. And we still have a minute two to play in our first half, and they have made it 31 to nothing here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And this is what it used to look like back in the day when sure Coach did. Snyder was here. Just route after route after route. Skill position players in the backfield, whether it was Michael Bishop or Daniel Thomas, a force in the backfield. That's what they have tonight. But this is kind of fun for that other side now. How are we going to respond, man? How are we going to handle being down 31 and nothing, a minute and two seconds left in the first half? Are we going to hang our heads? Are we going to come out and compete and try to just get in somewhat of a rhythm offensively and get small victories after small victories after small victories? That's their eighth scoring drive of 10 or more plays here in 2009. Mike Sherman is down 31 to nothing. And these sidelines, they couldn't be more opposite. They're going nuts on Kansas State, and they are sitting down on the other side of the a with their with their heads hung. That's a live ball taken at the 10. It'll be first and 10 with under a minute to go with Kansas State up by 31. And AM has had a lot of mistakes tonight. Yeah, they have. Right off the bat, they're moving the football, and it's a fumble. Great field position. And obviously, Kansas State has capitalized on that all night long. The penalty on the return sets them up with even better field position, half the distance to the goal. And then the first interception of the year done by Hartman on Gerard Johnson. And that's the kind of night it's been for the Aggies. You see four turnovers this season, and then the mistakes that they've had tonight. They'll set up a screen here. Watch out. Whoa, what a hit. My goodness. He has been all over the place tonight. By the way, the four touchdowns, last time it happened by an individual. And watch this hit here. Hello. That was a Josh Freeman. And by the way, Josh Freeman now in the National Football League with Tampa Bay, the quarterback. He did that against Texas A&M, ironically enough in 2008. 
You're Mike Sherman, you might want to just run the football and say, boys, let's regroup here at halftime. Yeah, you, you'd love to do that, because oh right now, goodness. as you see, they are shooting themselves in the foot, and this young team of AM is not handling adversity at all. Wow. 15 seconds to go. And now, if you're Kansas State, you've got one timeout left. You've got a couple of cracks at the end zone if you want them. Oh, and, and they're going to take them. That's a simple mistake by the back. I mean, it's a young guy, Christian Michael, a young running back. You've got to secure the football. It's all about the ball protected. That's where they've had their success this season and not turning it over. And right now, this evening, putting the ball on the turf or throwing picks is letting is leading to AM. Obviously down 31 nothing. It's gonna be more, but mentally they are getting demoralized. You saw it after the fumble. AM is jumping and running off the field. Excuse me, Kansas State is jumping and running off the field, and AM is slow to get up, and they are just hanging those heads on that sideline. And so this would be Gregory with five wide receivers, empty backfield. Feels the pressure. Now to the middle. Touchdown! A great job by the tight end. Probably the worst spot on that AM and defense is the middle linebacker position. You see right there, Michael Hodges, number 37 in the middle. The tight end, as, as the QB steps up in the pocket, just kind of dips on him a little bit, gives him one of those shoulder moves. Instead of going underneath him, goes over the top, and a great touch pass by the quarterback. Wow. No one saw this tonight. The Wildcats here at home on a cool evening in the middle of October are thumping the Aggies of Texas A&M. That is remarkable. By the way, the fumble recovery was done by a young man that came to this program as a quarterback. And that sets up the touchdown. It's now 38 to nothing, Kansas State. A great play call right there. Thinking they're going to run. The linebacker's playing downhill. You drop your quarterback back. He steps up in the pocket, protected well. Everything you coach, everything you teach. Tight end on a great route. Kind of dips on the middle linebacker. Gets over the top of him and wide open in the end zone. Right now, Kansas State game plan-wise, they're doing a very nice job offensively. We should mention that next weekend we'll be back here in Manhattan, Kansas. That game will be seen on Fox College Sports as Coach Hawkins and the Buffaloes of Colorado will make their way to Manhattan. Big 12 football next Saturday, Colorado at Kansas State. will come your way at 1230 Eastern right here on Fox College Sports, 1130 Central next Saturday. That's a great example of a young team facing adversity when they should be hitting the hole and getting up the field and trying to make something happen, running side to side instead of north and south. And right now, AM can't get in that warm locker any faster. And chilly nights here in Manhattan, Kansas, but these fans and the Wildcats, they could care less. They have put 38 up on the board here in the first half of play. And they've done it with relative ease at the line of scrimmage, just dominating up front. Gerard Johnson hands it off, and this should be the final play of the half. And it is. And Texas A&M will go into the locker room trailing by 38. Sam, take it away. Coach, I know you're not a very excitable guy, but right now the guys are making huge hits. They're making plays. What's gotten into your boys? Well, we're just playing a little bit better. I, we're making fewer mistakes than what we've made in the past. Uh, we've been fortunate in a lot of situations here that, uh, you know, A&M just had some difficulty with some of the things they normally do pretty well. But we've got a lot of time left here. I saw them score a lot of points last week against Oklahoma State. So, you know, this is by no stretch of the imagination over. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you, Derek. All right, Sam, good job. 
As Sam was almost taken into the locker room by Bill Snyder. I mean, all the way up the ramp. Good work, Sam. It's uh, since 1990, Kansas State, 135 and 5. Home on Fox College Sports. We're at Kansas State, Manhattan, 38 to nothing. The Wildcats shocking Texas A&M. We thought that Kansas State back home regrouping after Texas Tech would be a tough game for A&M. We did not anticipate a 38 to nothing lead at the half. No, we didn't. They're just dominating the line of scrimmage right now, running the football and doing whatever they want on offense. And defensively, for Texas A&M, they can't stop anybody. They can't get anything going. And the kick will be taken by Banks inside his own five. To the 15, to the 20. Look out. There he goes. One man to beat. Cuts it back in. There he goes. He's going to score. And the second half starts just like the first half. All Kansas State, 96 yards. And the first play of the second half for Brandon Banks. Are you kidding me? His third return of the year. Mr. Electricity tonight, all thus far this season. And right there on that return, an AM. This drive, defensively, on the kickoff, you were supposed to make a statement and say, we're still going to play another 30 minutes of football, and that did not happen if anything's indicative of that first return. He leads the Big 12 in kick return yards. He came in at 588. His return average is 28. That's on the rise. And now his third return for a touchdown here in 09 on a kickoff. I'll tell you what, you've got Kansas State upcoming. Watch out. I mean, the way that this team has played tonight is a different team than we saw two weekends ago against Iowa State. Let's look at the first half stats as it's now 45 to nothing. You see it's just uh, absolutely dominated by Kansas State. The biggest stat you want to look at right now is time of possession. Kansas State 1942. And when you look at the number of plays that Texas A&M has run, which is 30, that's 13 below their average. Remember, they average 86 a game. Tempo offensively is not there as Kansas State is owning time of possession. Mm -mm -mm. Unbelievable right now. Well, you coached with Pete Carroll at USC, and you've been uh, on the sideline just like Kansas State has up big a lot of times. Yeah, and when you're up big, you're telling your guys in the locker room, it's not over. We want to come out and make a statement that we play a full game because we probably haven't done it thus far this season, and Kansas State hasn't. They're on the path to probably the most complete game thus far in 09. Going nowhere. Lost yardage. Cyrus Gray on the return and a short return. And let's go downstairs, Sam. I'm sure it's not a very happy sideline there with Mike Sherman and the Aggies. No, guys, when Coach Sherman came back onto the field after halftime, he had nothing to say. And to be honest, I think I'd be speechless, too. When I talked to Coach Kynes this week, he said one of the problems with having so many freshmen is they have really high highs and really low lows. And once they get this low, it is hard to bounce back. But I can tell you right now, these Wildcats are enjoying this high high. 45 to nothing, showing blitz here. Brought down inside the 10 at the 8. That's Calvin, the big man. They are dominating every element of this football game. Offense, defense, special teams, you name it right now. And when you're a young player, when you're a young player, you need to do things right consistently and right now as you see this comparison on plays and time of possession that is not the case for Texas A&M. Lost nine on the play looking to the sideline and it's picked off. Picked off. Can they take it in? Knocked out of bounds at the 14 yard line. This young man has had a huge night. Is he something else? Joshua Moore he's been all over the field. Second interception here in 2009 for Moore. And when it rains, it pours right there. He sets his feet, he throws the football, a great play over the top, and the corner Moore comes up with it on the deflection, and away he goes. It, it's really interesting when you look at young players. Young players at the Division I level in high school, they probably won every game. 
They probably played well every time they laced them up. And right now, when you're faced with that for the first time as a freshman or a sophomore, it is uniquely different. You do not know how to respond, and that's what's going on right near, right now at every single uh, position for AM. Touchdown. Nine yard touchdown run. If you are on the other sideline right now in Texas AM, this second half could not have started any worse. No, no, you're exactly right. You see this run right here, and it's as though no one was even anywhere near the running back as he made his way to the end zone. A, a nice cut right there to find his way for six. But right now, remember what's going on at AM. They're trying to change a culture. And when you do that, you need to get your players to develop a different mentality, a winning mentality, and expecting to win process and expecting to win mindset and right now when things go bad things can get really bad and very ugly where you almost now you know you're gonna lose it's, it's a tough situation it's ugly now 52 to nothing you're watching the big 12 on fox college sports We've got a long way to go and it's 52 to nothing gregory and the wildcats rolling tonight over texas a&m and you can stay updated on everything FCS is working on this season by following us at twitter.com slash Fox College Sports. From programming info to college sports updates, follow us on Twitter. What a difference a week can make. Kansas State just last weekend lost 66 to 14 at Texas Tech. And tonight they have a lead of 52. Wow. And we should mention, by the way, Yogi, that we'll be here next weekend and that'll be an 11:30 kickoff central it'll be kansas state against colorado the buffaloes they really need a big win for coach hawkins in that program just like a texas a&m team does well at the half against number 17 ku they lead them 24 to 3. so you're you're talking about the potential of having a huge matchup with kansas state coming up what will be a win tonight at home, you know that their crowd, because of Bill Snyder being back and a huge win tonight by a wide margin, they're going to be interested to see how they come out next weekend. And then you have Coach Hawkins and uh, the Buffaloes coming off one of their bigger wins in recent history if they can hold on and beat a top-20 team. Yeah, it'll be exciting to watch those athletes match up against each other because I think Colorado can match up with Kansas State. Are, are you seeing right now that Texas A&M, it's almost like they're tiptoeing right now on the field. It's not hitting the hole and, and looking for contact. You're exactly right. You need to trust your coach. You need to trust your vision. And right now, they're not doing anything like that under the sun. Remember, as you see the quarterback get under center, this is a shotgun-oriented offense. That means they throw the ball a large amount of time as That's he drops right. back right now. Yeah, they'll do here, and he'll be brought down. Another sack. It's no secret the offensive line for a and is, is done, not done well tonight or throughout the entire season. But no, if you're an Aggie fan, they're recruiting well. They're recruiting a lot of offensive linemen. There's some of their young offensive linemen will develop. But up front, they are young, they're inexperienced, and it shows. The quarterback isn't setting his feet. The backs aren't hitting their holes. And right now, Jeffrey Fitzgerald, who leads the Big 12 in tackles for losses, is having his way. Trying to set up a screen here. They will. No flag on the play. Now a late flag comes in. That'll be a clip. 100%. And it was almost as though the official didn't want to call it. So let's just get this game going. But uh, he called it. It was a clip. And if you're that offense, the screen is the way to go right now. A lot of pressure up front. Block in the back. Offense number 17. Penalties declined. Fourth down. You see the replay here. And it'll be on the right of your screen, the clip. Right there. Got to have your hat in front of him to even touch him. And it's, that's upsetting because that's 17, Ryan Tannehill, who is the veteran on this staff, Mr. Everything. Hasn't been involved in the offense thus far tonight. Didn't do well on the, inter the first interception that was thrown. It looked like he stopped his route a little short and right there on the penalty. And when things are going bad for him, you know they're going bad for the entire program. And you have to kick it to Banks, or do you? This is returnable. Here he goes. To the 50. And brought down at the 43 yard line. We'll take a timeout with 12.02 to play. Kansas State at home. Bill Snyder, Family Stadium. And the coach is up by 52. 
You're watching college football on Fox College Sports. Yogi Roth, Dan McLaughlin, Samantha Steele. And what if sports.com is something that you need to try? It's a lot of fun taking a look at the different eras of college football and some of the great players over the years. What if sports.com? This is Banks again. And the substitutions have began for Kansas State. So let's take a look at Kansas State right off the bat. First play, second half, goodbye. It was about that fast, too. Banks took it all the way, 96 yards, and then interception sets up another score. And Kansas State is added to their lead, 52 to nothing. All these young players for Texas A&M, as crazy as it does sound, and I know their fans don't want to hear this, but you keep them in, and it does turn into a learning experience of some sort. I mean, you, you got to keep these kids out there, even though they're getting thumped. But this is a chance to learn from it. You you're, see the team leaders. You're exactly right. And Gregory, what an incredible night for him as, as he's kind of called it a day. He's back on the bench right now, having fun with his teammates. Banks, a great job. And, and Thomas just completely dominating this game, following his offensive line up front. But you're right. For a young player on defense, you've got to learn how to strain and how to compete when things are tough. We talked about it a few times already. They've always had success. They've always been the all-state, all-conference player. Right now, they're finer players that are faster, bigger, and stronger than them. And they need to strain and compete and understand what that's like. And I'm sure Coach Sherman, when he gets in the locker room after this game, will say that. Don't forget the taste in your mouth right now. Trail Snipes with his second catch, and that is the backup for tonight, Carson Kaufman. Got an idea there, Yogi, of the arm strength that Kaufman possesses. He's got a big time arm. Yeah, he does. And he, he did a nice job of managing the offense early on in the season, but didn't do anything to wow you. And I don't think this staff thought that he would win them a lot of games. He could manage a lot of games. And, and Gregory has that intangible of the ability to win a few games with his feet, with his arms, and his mindset of being a, a football guy his entire life. If you're Kansas State, I'm sure their coaching staff, one of the things that they'll tell their defense in particular, Bill Snyder will say, look, let's pitch a shutout. <laughs> you're exactly That's right. how you stay motivated. And especially the young guys. They'll be hearing from the juniors and seniors and the starters saying, hey, look what we did in the first two and a little bit more quarters of action here on the football field. Protect the goose egg. And Kaufman again will hand it off. Little change of direction to the outside. Back inside. Back in the end zone. A 19-yard touchdown run. And he is a good back. I mean, he leads the conference in yards per play. And does a really nice job. He, he considers himself a starting running back, even though Thomas has obviously taken the load. He is their purest running back in terms of understanding how to read defenses and defensive linemen. In fact, he's the one who taught Daniel Thomas a lot about the position. So a good moment for those two teammates. Cheering on for the extra point. Five plays, 43 yards. And it took two minutes and 14 seconds on the drive. Nine forty-eight to go in the third quarter. Fifty-nine points put up by Kansas State. Well, this is hard to believe. Fifty-nine to nothing, Kansas State over Texas A&M. By the way, Texas A&M coming into this game favored, favored, and they trail by fifty-nine points. How about the biggest loss in A&M history in 2002 against Oklahoma, 77-0. That year they were 4-8 and eight under Francione. And I, I could see 77 going up tonight because they haven't stopped anybody. And there's a lot of time still left. In Kansas State, their offense, they run the same thing in the first quarter or the fourth, no matter what the score is, and that's pounding the rock. And the kick is away. Taken at the 15. And something positive there for AM. Sam, give us something positive. What's going on down there? Well, I will tell you that for the last couple of weeks, Bill Snyder's been telling us all about the fact that these fans are incredibly loyal. 
Well, part of that is because this athletic administration makes a concerted effort to keep their fans happy even when the team isn't doing well. And one of the things they've done is inserted this thing called Harley Day, where, well, there's really no exact purpose to Harley Day. They just bring out about 100 Harleys, ride them around the stadium right before kick, and I happen to get on one today and get a ride. But, guys, it was awesome. They just do it because the fans get excited about it, and they love it. And well, they seem to still be pretty excited. Can't imagine why. How was the uh, the travel around the uh, the stadium? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure about the speed. Um, the guy that I was riding with, he was awesome. Kept me happy about the whole thing. But it was great. It was fun. I was pretty excited. They tried to get me to wear a purple bandana, but I wasn't having it. Gotta stay neutral, you know. I understand. We need to start getting Harleys to uh, for our travel instead of just the cars that we get. Man. It'd be sweet. Awesome. 9:42 to play and an injured Aggie. By the way, the last time that Kansas State has put up 60 or more points in a game was just a season ago. It's 69 points against Montana State. That's Montana State. This is Big 12 football, Texas A&M, against a team that is favored in this game. And this is a team who played Oklahoma State, a team ranked in the top 10 in the preseason, who beat Georgia in the opener. They only lost 36-31 a week ago. Well, how about Arkansas? Arkansas almost beat Florida, and they played Arkansas tough. When you have a young team, they can't read their press clippings one way or the other. They've got to come and play ball every single Saturday. They'll go deep. They've got a man. This should be six, and it is. Finally, something positive here for Texas A&M. And it's about time. Watch a coup with the touchdown reception. The freshman, he's been a bright spot thus far this season on this offense, making plays with his feet. Obviously, they think he has one of the best chances to becoming a big-time bona fide wide receiver prospect in this program. And this connection, you're going to see it a lot. We're quarterback to receiver. These two are going to be in the program for a little while, and they're going to continue to develop their rapport in the slot, on the outside, and obviously under center with Johnson. So one play, 66 yards, and it takes uh, 14 seconds. So Texas A&M gets on the board. Watch it through the touchdown reception. And he showed the burners here, didn't he? Yeah, and you want to be proud of the freshman. Reason being, he hasn't lost his focus. He's still playing every single snap, and that's why he's had success in all their big games thus far this season. They call him easy because it comes to him real easy, and that touchdown surely did. I want to remind you that we'll be here next week again, Kansas State and Colorado at 11.30, and you can order... Fox College Sports, 1-877-2-GET-FCS, 1-877-2-GET-FCS, or visit us online at foxcollegesports.com. Special teams, an element where young guys, they play a lot. But I promise, every young player who signs with a major Division One university never signs up and says, I'm going to be on the kickoff team. I'm so excited to be on special teams. But there's a pride in that. But there's also an element of a, a lack of focus. And you saw that on the last kickoff. So it'll be fun to see how they respond, the Aggies and the young people, on this kickoff team. Well, easy, as you like to talk about. Leads a team with now nine plays of 20 or more yards with that long touchdown reception. And the kick is away by Texas A&M. Here's Banks again. To the outside and finally knocked out of bounds. Now Texas A&M against Oklahoma State. You mentioned that loss. That was at College Station, 36-31. And next week they get Texas Tech at Texas Tech, the team that just put 66 up on K-State. Yeah, and the offenses are relatively similar in terms of spreading it out and taking shots down the field. But the offense and defensive line for Texas Tech, with the return of one of their starters today, has been solidified as a force that can protect the quarterback and also get after the quarterback. So if I'm A&M, once again, you're going to deal with a heavy rush next weekend. Texas Tech beat Nebraska 31-10 to today. And as we mentioned before, it was Texas over Oklahoma. The final there was 16 to 13. Pass completed, a five-yard pickup at the half. Colorado leading 24 to 3 over KU. 
Iowa State over Baylor, 14 to three. Of course, Baylor star Griffith is out, and coming up, uh, and it's just about ready to kick off. Mizzou and Oklahoma State, late start. Those two teams and a big road test for the Tigers and Oklahoma State without Des Bryant again, trying to pick up another conference win. Under nine minutes to go. And a handoff. There he goes again. Brought down at the 35. It's really interesting watching this running back run. Why? Well, when you see Thomas, most of his runs in the first half were front side runs. By Bigger that, too. he went to the left and he stayed course to the left. I mean, when you're a true running back, like Valentine is, you have the ability to cut back because that's what your vision has been ever since you started playing Pop Warner football. And in zone runs, that's exactly what is allowable. Cut back lanes, cut back lanes. On his touchdown run was a cut back lane. On that run, he did the same exact thing. It was just a weekend ago. He had 96 yards at Texas Tech including a 61-yard run. Valentine again, spinning and still on his feet, but brought down. You know, he leads a Big 12 in total offense per play, almost nine yards a play, so it gives you an idea. He's a, a home run hitter for Bill Snyder. An interesting story out of Baton Rouge. He walked onto his JC, played great. Then he walked on to Kansas State, and played great. Now he's a scholarship, and he is their, their best true tailback. And the more Wildcat they play with Thomas at the quarterback, the more he plays at running back. So you might see him more as the season progresses. And a short pick up there. With games like this, you got to figure the fan base gets energized, not only about the news of Bill Snyder coming back and trying to get this program back to where it was, but uh, all of a sudden the fans say, well, maybe things are going the right direction here. You know, Bill Snyder didn't take that long, and look what he did to Texas A&M. Look at some of the wins that he's had this year. That's right. I mean, the UMass game, Louisiana early on, Texas Tech, they didn't mean much to this fan base, but this win... It, it will mean the world to them right now about the midway point in this season. We mentioned at the uh, top of the broadcast how this being the midway point of the season, you want to see where you're at. And Kaufman a little shook up as he looks over to the sideline. And uh, now you get a better idea of where you're at against a young Texas A&M team, but a big test next week again with Colorado. And every season, whether you're a player or a coach, is a lifetime. And you go through the highs and lows of a lifetime and you either remain undefeated and you're mortal or you lose a couple games and you're immortal and that's what's happening right now for AM. they're gonna have to go back to college station regroup or remind themselves they got some more games on the schedule and, and they got to show up no matter what so they might as well do it with a positive attitude and they're gonna, they're gonna try to continue to play this one out and pull as many positives as they can it'll be a turnover on downs as they went for it on fourth down so texas a&m gets a stop and they'll have the football when you're in the huddle right now, and your Coach Sherman or his offensive coordinator or whatever coach is talking to these players at their respective position groups, you're saying, let's just go do things right and try to coach off the tape. Because they might come in tomorrow and watch this film and rip through that first half, and in the second half get to some real teaching moments for these, these young players on the squad. Yogi, we talked about how Texas A&M, they'll just throw it away, they came in averaging nearly 80 plays a game and that's only their 37th play of the night and they only have 123 total yards that's it they have given up 52 plays and 356 yards yeah. their, their offense is based on west coast principles what does that mean that's the short passing game but utilizing the entire field in a spread oriented offense and when pressure comes and it's solid press man-to-man -man coverage on the outside and in the slot you don't have the ability to complete those short passes. And that's what happened thus far early in the game to get him out of a rhythm. And we were talking to some of the fans and, and folks that followed this program leading into this game, following the Texas Tech game in which Kansas State gave up the 66 points. Well, they're, they're facing a Texas A&M team that is fourth in total offense coming into play tonight. And yet, here they have just 133 yards now. And their quarterback's had a tough night. He's finding a rhythm, completing the last two passes to his two probably favorite targets in the, in the tight end and, and the backup quarterback, Tannehill. But right now, their focus needs to be on the QB and putting him in positions every snap to set his feet, 
find his open receiver and go from one receiver to the second. On the West Coast offense, sometimes you have three, four receivers you can potentially get to. Right now, he's lucky he's getting past his first progression because that offensive line up front. Over the middle, another first down picked up. That's what this offense is meant to do. Crossing routes, shallow, intermediate, then take a shot deep on a post. That's exactly what they do. And right now, Johnson, yeah, of course, the game is, is out of reach, but he's finding a nice comfort level, setting his feet, and making accurate throws. And that's what you need to do as a quarterback. You need to do two things to be, to be successful. Be accurate and anticipate where your receivers are going to be. And thus far on this drive, Johnson's doing so. It was Howard Morrow with the catch. He's a fifth-year senior. Missed 07 with a wrist injury, and they said really it's just taken him about a year to get back in. Go to the corner of the end zone, and that is caught a touchdown. A touchdown for Texas A&M and his second of the night. Gives you an idea of just how good Wachaku could be. That's a nice job by them. And there are a few second teamers for Kansas State on defense right now, but the corner they just made a plan is not a second teamer. That's their starter, Steven Harrison. He's been beat a few times last weekend. He got picked on a little bit, and, and right now they went right back to it, and I'm sure that was part of the game plan heading in before this turned into a relative blowout. But it, it gained some confidence for this quarterback and this receiver and this offense. They're going to pull every positive they can in their last two drives. They've done some good things. So 5-0-1 to go in our third quarter of play. Kansas State 59 with the extra point. That now makes it Texas A&M 14. Another look at the touchdown here. Once again, set that back foot. Throw the ball, give your receiver a chance. He goes up and makes a play. Initially, I thought he pushed off on the play, but now in watching it, he really didn't. He just kind of timed it, stopped, and was able to jump the, uh, uh, make the, the timing for the jump. The staff has said he's got a great feel for the football. He can track the ball. It's kind of like a center fielder. When the ball's hit, you know where it's going to relatively land, so you can run full speed. When you're a receiver and you know where the ball's going to land, you can mess around with the DB. You can slow up. You can speed up. A guy by the name of Larry Fitzgerald has mastered that trade of kind of messing with the defensive back's head. I'm, I'm running faster, I'm running slower. Then out of nowhere, you pluck the ball away from him. This is going to be number seven. Easy. You're going to like him. You're going to hear his name a lot. You should be excited if you're an Aggie fan. Only a freshman. You have him around for a while. And the kick is hit out of bounds. By the way, Banks is not back there, so penalty. And a very short kick. In Kansas State, they're going to come back and just run their offense. And right now, that Kick offense has not been stopped. Offense, Kansas State ball, 40-yard line. The fun part about defensive football, if you're Texas A&M, is that every single player has a gap. And by that, they have a responsibility. Every single area of this field is supposed to be covered by one person or another. And when teams run the football, you find out how good you are at fitting those gaps. And right now in this second half, it's going to be great film for them to pull from and find out, all right, are we reading our keys? Are we following our responsibility? Just getting back to the fundamentals of tackling and fitting up in defensive football. You mentioned a, a nice story about Valentine and former walk-on and junior college and uh, did that here at Kansas State. You know, he was number one in their depth chart beginning of last season. And you do get an idea. You do get an idea of him being able to bounce to the outside. And you know that Bill Snyder and the Kansas State uh, coaching staff want to just keep that clock running. But uh, it's an interesting story to see a guy go from a walk-on in two different spots to being able to have play in a major conference like the Big 12. There's those quick feet again. There's a lot of great stories on this Kansas State team. A lot of junior college players that have had interesting backgrounds. You know, one of my favorite stories of the year in all of college football is 81 at Trell Snipes. I mean, he came out of Seattle. His mom was sick. He relatively raised himself, going from shelter to shelter as a high school athlete. Finally goes down to junior college in Bakersfield, does well, comes up here to Kansas State, has had a, having a fine career. One of the nicer young men that I've met thus far this season. And it just goes to show you that we get to celebrate college football every weekend here on Fox College Sports and talk about all these great stories of kids overcoming adversity that, that you're not going to hear about in the National Football League all the time. So a nice job by a lot of these young men. 
The official threw his hat as the intended receiver was out of bounds, then came back in. A lot of times you'll see the officials do that to indicate that that particular player is out on that There's play. There's no flag, no foul on the play. Player was out of bounds. Great description right there on that, <laughs> on that penalty. So punt formation now, and they'll kick it away. Fourth and four with 3.38 to go. Haven't seen too many of these in a while. Punts by Kansas State. But another element they can work on at Texas A&M, young returner. They're excited about get the ball in their playmaker's hands. And they'll get away from it, but it takes a Kansas State bounce and still <laughs> stays in bounds. It's that kind of night, folks, for the Wildcats, isn't it? It, it totally is. And you see them hanging their heads, but the game goes on. You've got to continue to compete. And they've done well the last few drives, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out offensively again after scoring the last two touchdowns. If you call yourself a college sports fan, then you have to get FCS for 900 live NCAA events year by year. And exclusive club sports as well. FCS, the place where college never ends. To get FCS, number to call 877-2-GET-FCS or visit us at foxcollegesports.com, foxcollegesports.com. No flag on the play, now two late flags fly in. Boy, those were awfully late, weren't they? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know how much pass interference was on that particular play on Tannehill on the crossing route. And it was Hartman whistled for the infraction. 3.21 to go. Pass interference, defense, number two, hook and turn. 15 yards in the previous spot, first down. Well, a little bump, maybe. There it is. There it is. That's the kind of the way those DB coaches teach it, being a former receiver. They want to grab you with that backside arm and then reach across you, and hopefully it doesn't get called. But they call it right there, and they're moving. Coach Sherman was very concerned about special teams coming into this game because of Bill Snyder. And we saw the game that we did. The blocked extra point led to a win for Kansas State. We've also seen Banks with a return of 96 yards on a kickoff return, 96. But uh, special teams, the good teams have excellent special teams and even if you're not the best offensively or defensively you can win or lose games with your special teams. And so much of special teams is a mentality and it starts with your star players putting your starting linebackers and running backs on special teams which a lot of these programs were doing. When you're seeing a trend it started about 10 years ago in college football with the guy at Virginia Tech, Frank Beamer. The head coach running the special teams. And they do the same thing here at Kansas State. Bill Snyder makes sure that he has a, a very good impression on what's going on on the special teams. And as a player, if the head coach puts that much importance on the team's aspect, then you know that it's a serious element. And for young players, it's how you prove yourself and get on the field and get more playing time and more playing time. It's going to be fun to watch Johnson in about four more weeks. And why? Because he's going to start to set his feet a little more. There's a lot he's going to be able to learn from this tonight. He's taken his drops tonight, and he's used to getting pressured. And when that happens for a young quarterback and a young starter, you sometimes can see ghosts. And you start to move in the pocket a little earlier, a little quicker. And he's done that early on tonight in the first quarter and on that last snap right there. You need to trust your offensive line, even though you, they haven't been there for a, for a lot of this season thus far. But you start getting those happy feet. You don't set your feet. You can't make throws. Balls start to sail. And then you start to rush out of the pocket and miss some of your progression. Now I'll ask you this. If you're Colorado and you've watched film of this year, and you've seen a guy like Banks on kickoff returns, punt returns, do you kick to him next week? Not a chance. You do not let him beat you. Now, 
there's a lot of elements of that that we can discuss. The first being Colorado, their back's against the wall. They may challenge their kickoff unit to cover them and see how that first one goes. But those plays, they can demoralize you real fast. Play action, the tight end still on his feet. They finally mark him out of bounds. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 44-yard line. That's the sixth time they've ran that same exact play. Fake the outside zone to the left, roll out to the right, and deal it to the fullback or the tight end in the flats. A nice job by the quarterback taking what the defense gives you and a great job of lowering your shoulder on the sideline. They call that the old dip and rip. Dip that inside shoulder, lean into him, and will use his momentum to create momentum and propel you forward. See with all the sweatshirts and uh, the hoods, it's cold out here in Manhattan, Kansas tonight. There's Valentine again. Reversing direction and then uh, spinning down with under a minute and a half to go here in our third quarter play. You being now a former Pittsburgh guy living on the West Coast, you know, this is cold weather for you. Yeah, second half, I can't lie, I threw the jacket on. It's good to get in the Midwest. Reminds me of Pennsylvania a little bit. Beautiful night. See my breath a little bit. It's nice, a little brisk. This is football weather. It is football weather at that. Second and eight, Kaufman wants to throw. Now he'll keep it himself. And there's our guy, number 40, Vaughn Miller. Evan called his name a lot. I want to hear us say seal the deal when he makes plays like that. And uh, they did a nice job game planning away from him exactly. all night long. He has not made plays, and it's a good job by that staff. They spend a lot of hours in the film room. They get in around 7, leave around midnight, three or four nights a week. They did not want to run at Miller. They did not want to have anyone, whether it be a tackle or a running back, have to face him one-on-one -on -one in pass protection. They've done a great job as they've rolled away from him all night. Kaufman to throw and uh, he'll be sacked near the 45-yard uh, line. They'll mark it at the 43. And Kaufman on the night is now four of five, 43 yards and his longest 21. There's a look at Miller, who still has a chance to get a little bit bigger as this third quarter comes to a close. Kansas State, all Wildcats tonight. Big crowd, sea of purple, and gearing up for a game next weekend on Fox College Sports against the Buffaloes of Colorado. One quarter to go, it's 59-14. 59 to 14, Kansas State leading Texas A&M here at home as we begin the start of our fourth quarter and the Wildcats will kick it away. Oh, ooh, they almost got it. Fair catch call for. And Sam, what do you have for us down on the sideline? Well, guys, when I talked to Coach Sherman this week, I asked him what the biggest differences were between the NFL and the college level. And he mentioned the fact that you have a lot of more players that you're working with, and you have a lot less time, about 20 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week. But the thing he was most concerned about was the hash marks and the difference that makes in play calling. Yo, you've been around the game for a while. What do you think? Is it that big of a deal? It's hard when you're in the NFL for that long. You look at his staff, 47 combined years of guys on the offensive side of the football been in the National Football League. When you come from where the football is traditionally in the middle of the field, all of a sudden you're on the hashes. The splits change for the players. Calling the strength of a formation has to alter as a play caller. And it's, it is a big of a deal because you have to get used to it. And every coach I've ever talked to or met who's came from the National Football League to college, that's been the number one thing. But on top of that, it's not only hashes, but it's also personnel and getting players in and out of a football game. In the National Football League, remember, you're talking to the quarterback in his headset. You've got things you can tell him. In college, you've got a signaler from the sideline, which is their graduate assistant, a, a former great player with Nebraska, Zach Taylor, a quarterback there. He's the 2006 Player of the Year offensively in the Big 12. But there's a lot of issues when you come from the league to college. And you're right, you nailed it, Sam. It is the hash marks is the number one issue that coordinators and play calls have to deal with. But it's also something they can deal with, and they obviously do. Well, for instance here, they're on the left hash. 
So now the big side, the wide side, is the right side. You know, when he first got in the league, you're sitting there thinking, okay, if I'm in the middle of the field, I can go right or left. That kind of changes things, doesn't it? It's a long throw if you're going to go to the bottom of, the, of, the, of your screen right now. It's a long throw for your quarterback. The nice thing about AM is their quarterback, while he hasn't had a great night, can make those throws. Up in the air and incomplete. By the way, before tonight, Texas A&M had 16 sacks. This evening they have one. And on the flip side, Kansas State total tonight coming into play had six sacks. And this evening they have six. I mean, think about that. They've matched their season total this evening. They have gone after the quarterback. Turnovers number one, quarterback play number two. Every game, every level of football, go watch any game, and that's exactly what will tell the winner and the loser. They have to kick it now deep in their own end zone. It's a low kick. There he is, Banks. Been sitting on the bench, a little bit cold because he's not playing with that first team unit. So a short return, and that'll stop play at 13.52. Kansas State thumping Texas A&M 59 to 14. 59 to 42. K-State with a lead 13 52 to go in our fourth quarter of play. Don't forget Big 12 football next Saturday will be at Kansas State again. Colorado and K-State 1230 Eastern on Fox College Sports. By the way, uh, Colorado leads by 10 over Kansas 27 to 17 with 7.24 to go in the third quarter. How about Von Miller tonight? You look at Von Miller, relatively shut down tonight due to the game plan, but if you're a young player, you have to look at him and be excited because he was relentless. Even though his numbers didn't improve, he didn't stop. His motor did not stop no matter what the score was or what was going on in the game, and he, and he got himself a sack there. So first and 10 for Kansas State. Throwing the football, leading 59 to 14. Well, the biggest thing is you've got your number two quarterback, or, or almost your your one A quarterback, one B quarterback in before the game tonight. You want to run your offense. He needs to get comfortable in the system. He can't just get used to handing the football off. Run your stuff, and, and I and I know you you may not like that. It's not about running it up, but you need to run your offense. Second down and eight. Valentine, big hole. How many times we said that? Big hole because that uh, offensive line has really done a nice job. They've done a great job. And you really want to give credit to the offensive line coach, Charlie Dickey. He did a great job with this team, kind of piecing this offensive line together to be successful and get off the rock. So much when you are in the gun is still hearing the snap count and as an offensive lineman, you can only see the snap count because it's just a foot or a hand. So to get off the ball the way they are, it's been impressive all night. Play clock is down to five, working from the shotgun. Kaufman. Look at this. Almost was able to break a tackle and make something out of nothing. By the way, we should mention that uh, Carson Kaufman, the quarterback now for Kansas State, his brother was an All-American tight end at Missouri, who's now playing in the National Football League. Yeah, and his dad played at Kansas State That's right. as well. Yep. So football is in his family, which is a credit to this young man because he's handled this very humbly and in a really, a really respectful fashion of being the starter, not being the starter, not knowing if he's going to be the starter. And it's a credit to the staff, the program, and obviously this kid's upbringing. His dad, Paul, tied in at Kansas State, then went on to the National Football League for 11 seasons. And as I mentioned, his brother Chase played tight end at Mizzou and drafted by Cincinnati Delay, last year. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Tell you what, his brother had a great set of hands and was one of the best tight ends Big 12 has seen in quite some time. And with Chase Daniel and Jeremy Macklin and some of the great players that they had, he just fit right in with that terrific offense. And Missouri, as we mentioned, at Oklahoma State tonight. You can tell they play a little catch growing up. Oh, no, I would backyard. think so. Yeah, I would think so. Kick is away, a high kick. Fair catch called for, but it'll take a K-State bounce. Look at that. And that is a traditional rookie mistake right there. You have to catch it. Catch. If you're going to call a fair catch, you've got to catch unless it's going over your head into the end zone. 
11.46 to play, 59-14. Kansas State leading Texas A&M. A look at the Big 12 scoreboard. A few finals already in, but the big game we're watching, Colorado trying to pull up an upset against KU. 27-17, Colorado will be here next weekend. Oklahoma State in the first, 7-3 over Missouri and Iowa State. How about Iowa State? You know, they're one bad special teams play away from only having one loss this year with a new coach. And then Kansas on the ropes the next weekend. Gene Chizik, of course, left Iowa State to head to Auburn as the catch is made. Little breathing room now. And Morrow knocked out of bounds at the seven yard line as they're starting this drive on their own one. Paul Rhodes doing a great job at Iowa State. He's felt that he was going to be a head coach his entire career, prepared like it for the past eight seasons as he interviewed for those jobs. And now he's got his guys believing that they can win versus finding ways to lose and, and altering that culture there. Over the middle, and the pass is incomplete, but flags on the play. They come in late from the sideline with 11.25 to play. It's almost as if the receivers were running the picks. Pass interference, number 45, defense. Flat foul, first down. Crowd doesn't like that one one bit. You see uh, underneath routes is West Coast offense so much is built on shallow crossing routes. If you can remember in the 80s, early 90s, the Jerry Rice's, John Taylor's, or even the Sterling Sharps when they were with Green Bay and, and Mike Sherman obviously with Brett Favre and the great ones. But he's part of that lineage of West Coast offense coaches. It started with Bill Walsh. The previous play is being challenged. It started with Bill Walsh, George Seifert, a variety of other guys. Mike Shanahan, just to name a few, and the list can go on and on and on. So let's see what uh, the challenge is all about here. Well, Coach Snyder, he doesn't want to give up an inch as he makes the challenge. I think they want to say the ball was tipped. It looks like it was, and if that's the case, yeah. then it should not be a penalty. So It's a light like, ball. It's a good job by the guys up in the booth. Great job on that staff at Kansas State challenging that. And it's good for the players. And it's good to get in a rhythm of what well, we're challenging a call. What would we do in this instance? And as a defensive coordinator, you've got to be ready for both. And obviously on the other side of the football as an offensive coordinator, be ready for both instances of getting the penalty or moving on to the next down. See it right there. Little tip, as a D lineman, you're always taught, when you see that QB throw, get your hands up in the air and take a swat at it. What's interesting, I don't know if you feel this way, but in watching it, it doesn't look like he tipped it until you see the, the rotation of the ball. Then it's obvious that somebody touched it. But just initially looking at it, I didn't think that. Bill Snyder, a competitor, he's been doing this for years. Not gonna give up an inch. I don't blame him. You're either competing or you're not. He was talking about his family the other day in his office. That he's got After further review, the play stands as called. Kansas State is charged with a team timeout. Interesting. It was interesting talking to the, the replay officials before the game as, as they're to our right here in this booth. They said they review every play and you need conclusive evidence to overturn it. And if you don't feel it's conclusive, then, then obviously the play does not get overturned. There's a lot of plays we kind of hashed out that they were from earlier today in other games, the Texas-Oklahoma game on the, on the punt return on the muff punt. We even went back to the Texas-USC days with the Vince Young knee on the ground. Doing a good job up here to our right on the replays. Throw underneath and incomplete. It was interesting talking to Coach Snyder. He talked a lot about his family. Said, I got five kids, eight grandchildren, just had a great grandchild, and I want to get home and see them. So he wants his game to, to get going. He, he loves his Sundays and spending the time with, with the family. And you could tell he, he was kind of a changed man from his first tenure here to now. He's got a little bit different perspective. 
I think the main question, though, for most people that aren't from this community, or maybe they don't follow Big 12 football, a little shovel pass here, and he lost his shoe, is why come back? You know, he just turned 70 about 10 days ago, and yet Bill Snyder is coaching at the Division One level and not just doing it at a small school. He's doing it at a big school in a big conference and trying to regain a big status that he once had with this school. Why come back, though? Well, the big reason is that he feels such a loyalty to this university. As much as he did for them, the university did for him in terms of the fans supporting him and the program and the alumni. That when it was in the, the state it was a year ago, he felt that he was the guy that could right the ship and hopefully turn it in the right direction before handing it off for somebody to do it. He, he doesn't want to do it for another 20 or 30 years, let alone probably five or 10, but he wants to get it going in the right direction for everyone who's associated with K-State football. I'm curious in your conversation, as you had a nice uh, long visit with Bill Snyder, you know, how, how much longer does he want to do this? At the age of 70, the stadium is, is named after him. When you pull off the highway, the drive down here to get to this uh, stadium is named Bill Snyder Highway, that stretch of highway. I mean, how much longer, though, do you really want to do this? Well, I mean, yeah, even more, he created the logo that was on the field. I mean, he's a part of this program in every element of its essence. Um, I think he sees himself doing it for a few seasons, getting it going in the right direction and then turn it over to somebody that can carry it on. But I know athletic director John Curry is fired up about having him here and the discipline and the accountability that he brings to the program. And every one of these players, they say he walks into the room, I sit up in my chair, respect this man for everything he's done. 10.25 to go, and it's 59-14, to 14, Kansas State with the lead. And uh, you were just telling me, and you mentioned this right before break, the logo. Bill Schneider has a hand in the logo. Yeah, he does. He said when he first started here, he met a guy named Tom Bookwalter in town, and he wanted to recreate the logo and make a logo that signified Kansas State football. Not the university, but when you see it, you think about K-State football. And he's done that. And not only does he win games, not only does he change the culture and involve the community, but he changed the logo at the university that's on the field, which is named after him. And his imprint is on this program and will be for quite some time. The logo. Now that's something. It's not all X's and O's. <laughs> He's got that uh, design element to him. Got to give him credit. But it's pretty neat because this is what does signify K-State football. And uh, obviously he is synonymous with K-State football and everything they've accomplished you know, in, in the past a, lo a long time, I guess we'll say. Late 80s to now. Essentially, when you talk about Bill Snyder, they had just about 13,000 fans in the first game that he ever coached. 13,000. Here at uh, this particular facility. He called them Heartland fans. Care about values, about their family, about the community, about the program. And, and now, relatively almost sold out tonight, almost 50,000. And, you know, obviously when they are in their heyday, this place was rocking. Got the chance to talk to a few alumni last night at the athletic director's house with Samantha. And they talked about this program and what it means to the community. And when he started to win, how much they got behind it and, and just ingrained with every element of the di discipline the players were coached with, and they kind of carried that over to their personal lives and everything they did. So this community in Aggieville is all about Bill Snyder. Aggieville. Good fun little, oh, that's a fun little spot, you know, up and down Aggieville, bars and restaurants. They'll be rocking tonight, you know that. I think the students might have left a little early. <laughs> Do you blame Warm them? Warm it up. Chilly night leading 59 to 14. There are be fourth down now for Kansas State. And there are still areas for this Kansas State team to improve. This is a blowout, but this instance right here, it's fourth down. They traditionally would go for it because Josh Cherry, their kicker, hasn't had much success. Now they get to put him in a situation, and for him mentally, how's he going to adapt right now? It's a 46-yard attempt. Kick is up, distance is there, and it is good. 46-yarder.
Big 12 football on Fox College Sports is brought to you by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most are what we deliver the best. Phillips HD. Gerard Johnson will take over on offense again for Texas A&M. He's 14 to 31, but two picks, 220 yards, a couple of touchdowns. But it is a blowout here in the Manhattan, Kansas, 62 to 14, Kansas State. He's had a tough night, but he's came back and then thrown a few nice balls here in the third, fourth quarter. Brandon Klimek, by the way, a redshirt freshman, a 46-yard field goal, first of his career. Let's go back to your predictions for this game. Yeah, number one, compete at the line of scrimmage for AM, and they obviously didn't do it. They got dominated up front. Number two, protect the football. They throw their first interception of the year by Johnson and put the ball on the turf right off the bat, led to a touchdown. And the youth movement needed to play well on the road, and they didn't do that. And it's the first time they really had the plane trip, a real road test. The, the first road game, I guess, technically, was at the new Cowboy Stadium against Arkansas. And they, they learned a great deal. And when they come back, they, there's a lot of firsts when you go on the road. It's the first chartered flight. It's all the meals. It's the bus trips. It's the first walkthrough. It's the first hotel. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. It's all of those things. So for a young player, you can get a little giddy, a little excited. You want to kind of show the opponent, uh, the opposing crowd all your stuff and get out of your game. And before you knew it, it was a three touchdown game here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And A&M, they were, their backs were against the wall. And offensively, they didn't, couldn't get anything going. And Johnson, probably one of his worst games as an Aggie, completing less than 50% of his passes. There's the numbers on Johnson. Then on the other side, Grant Gregory. And again, we, you know, we, we come into this game like many fans, not really sure who may start. You know, Kansas State pretty tight-lipped about it. Our guess was we thought Grant Gregory, and he went 10 of 13, 147 with a touchdown. And Carson Kaufman has gone 5 of 6, 45 yards. That's a lot of credit to Gregory and how tough he is mentally. To not know you, who the starting quarterback is going to be, or and if it's going to be you, to be able to still prepare as the starter is not easy. And for both of these young men, I mean, it, it could have been a, a shoelace or it could have been a couple interceptions, and you're you're in the game. So for them to prepare and understand the game plan is impressive, and and more so when you look at it even deeper of the practice reps. You're only practicing on your game plan Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday's a polish day. Friday's a polish day. And there's only 60 to 80 plays a day. So you have to split them 50-50, where traditionally you'll probably go 80-20, and the 20% are probably just handoffs. So to split the entire package between two guys is, is impressive for both of them to play efficiently as they did this, as they did this evening. It's interesting, you're seeing Tannehill at receiver down at the bottom of your screen, number 17. Didn't want to play him a lot heading into this game. Only put him in on third downs as you see him run a crossing route as they launch one down the sideline. And a jump ball, no flags on the play. But they didn't want to play him a lot due to the potential injury. But he Personal is... foul, crossing the passer, number 94. Hit to the face, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. He has been their most reliable receiver. So you wonder Mike Sherman said, forget the backup element. Let's put our best 11 guys on the field and get number 17 out there. He's a top active A&M receiver with over 1,100 yards coming into this uh, ball game tonight out of Big Spring, Texas, and only a sophomore. Under seven minutes to go, 62 to 14. Dumps it underneath. A pick up of two on the play. Morrow with his third reception. So much in this West Coast offense, or West Coast principles in the spread offense is about the placement of the football. Picking shoulders, becoming a very accurate quarterback. The only way you can do that is by setting your feet. In the second half, Johnson has done that. And it's what he's going to be able to pull from this game 
when he goes back and, and critiques his individual performance. You can see him wearing the gloves in a cool night here in Manhattan. It's deflected and incomplete. And, and for the game that Johnson had, it obviously wasn't stellar by any stretch, but he's one of the more impressive young men and young quarterbacks we've had a chance to talk to. A great family, he said. Uh, his parents taught him the game of football and how to be respectful and humble. He lost his father a few years ago. Uh, 11 foster kids lived in his house. Just an incredible young man, well-spoken, a true leader. Defensive coordinator Joe Kimes said he's going to be the CEO of a company someday. He is just an absolute stud, and, and physically, obviously, he's imposing every time you want to lay a hand on him. And he's going to develop into the signal caller all the Aggie fans want him to be. Big hit at the 20, Morrow with the first down. Gerard Johnson, fourth, the NCAA and uh, passing touchdowns coming into play. Eighth on the career completions list, ninth on their attempts list, fifth already on their touchdown list. And as you mentioned, he's only a junior. They'll hand it off this time. The tackle inside the five, so the Aggies will have it first and goal. And this is good. As a player, I was around some tough losses, and you always pull from it. Because every single play from the first quarter to the fourth, it's one, two, three, and, or multiple guys not doing their job. And, and ultimately, this game comes down to accountability at every position, including the coaching staff. And that's what these young guys are going to go back and watch this film and, and ask themselves, was I accountable every single snap? Offense, defense, and special teams. Did I do my job, what my teammate expected me to do? Because at the end of the day, it's not like basketball. You could have Jordan and Pippen and do okay. In football, all 11 guys need to play sound, play well, and do their job and fulfill their responsibility to the program. And a whistle before the play with a flag. 5.25 to go. There's no foul on the play. Timeout, Kansas State. So let's take a look at the upcoming schedules for both these teams. And we'll start with Texas A&M, the remaining games. It does not get any easier next weekend as they'll have Texas Tech have to go to their place, then at home against Iowa State, at Colorado, then at number 18, Oklahoma, Baylor on the 21st of November, and then against number two, Texas. So for a &M, there's some uh, tough teams upcoming. And there's not a bye week in there either. And for a young team and young guys that are probably beat up a little bit, they're not used to the grind of a longer training camp and a longer season, they may hit that proverbial wall. So there's a lot of ways as a coach where you'll this be able to deal with that. 30 seconds, timeout. And the biggest advantage a &M has in that regard is they have an NFL head coach who has to deal with that and has dealt with that with rookies a lot of times at every position. They hit that wall. You know, in the NFL, it's you know four weeks of preseason, four games before you even play your first game. You know, that's a third of a college football season. So if you're an Aggie fan, you're not happy tonight, but know that he's got the program on the right track recruiting wise recruiting up front offensive defensive linemen the strength staff you're not going to find a better one in the country and dave kennedy and the things that he's doing with those guys and their quarterback he has all the potential in the world and, and their staff has developed a lot of guys including one certain hall of famer brett Favre. so i, I think they'll be okay just might take a little time brings up a third and goal now with the ball on the five stops play with 521 to go Aggies have just four turnovers coming into play. And that has not been the story tonight, though. They've turned the ball over. Special teams has hurt them. They've been outplayed in every element of the football game tonight. But they haven't quit, and, and you've got to give them credit for doing that. And, and young guys often can. Looking end zone. And no, he was out of bounds when he caught it. The tough thing about the spread offense is when you get down inside the 10, you don't have a lot of plays down there. You don't run the ball a ton anyway. So you have to sit back in the gun, offset your running back, and throw some sort of combination around. You want to get the ball out of your hands. And when you get inside the 10, a lot of quarterbacks like being under center because they could be more rhythmic. Give me the ball faster. Let me take one, two, three steps and get rid of the rock. 
And when you're in the gun, you got to feel the laces, find the football, and you can be a hair late. And on that play, it could have been a touchdown, but a little late on the throw. In the middle, intercepted. First thing you're going to tell your quarterback on this, you didn't need to get out of the pocket. Sit in the pocket. When you get out of the pocket, he threw relatively off his front foot on that. Watch the quarterback right now. He gets a snap. There isn't any pressure. He's running to his right, throws off his relative front foot. Put your back foot in the ground, son, and make a throw. Make a throw not across your body. There's no pressure. He doesn't need to go anywhere. The protection is set right in the middle of him. And when you throw across your body at any level, whether it's in the backyard, backyard football or National Football League or here tonight at Joe Snyder Family Stadium, good things aren't going to happen. We'll keep it on the ground here. This is the fun part if you're Kansas State. You get everybody in. Everybody's in the game. All the guys that have put in all the hard work on the service teams, training camps, spring football, all of those things are getting in the game, getting a little love. Five minutes to go. Let's check in with Sam downstairs. Guys, when you coach college football in the state of Texas, it's pretty darn important to keep a good relationship with the high school football coaches in that state. Now, one of the ways that Coach Sherman is doing that is by writing these letters after each game each week, basically telling them how the week went, what they talked about that week, what he used for motivation, and maybe what went wrong. Now, I hate to be negative Nancy here, but what do you think he's going to write in these high school letters this week? I mean, is there anything positive to say? Well, I think the one positive thing that he's going to write in those letters is, well, hey, we, we got beat, we got beat soundly, but we're going to come back and compete and play Texas A&M football. And we're obviously giving young guys a chance to play early and play often. And right now, if you recruit in the state of Texas, the other program, UT, is doing pretty good for themselves right now with a huge win today. And A&M, it's got a story tradition. They put a lot of people in the National Football League. If you're a youngster in that state, and there's a lot of them that play football very well. A&M could be the perfect place for you to play early, play often, and be coached by a guy who is at that place where you've always dreamed of, which is the National Football League. On second and six, they run the option. By the way, Gerard Johnson, quarterback of uh, Texas A&M, 225 consecutive passes, uh, pass attempts. Uh, this season without uh, an interception, he set the Big 12 single season record tonight. But then it didn't go as planned because after he set the record, three interceptions. Yeah, he, this was definitely not what he thought of last night right before he went to bed and, and visualized this football game. But it, it, sometimes it never is, and you have to react and adapt. And that's what Coach Sherman is going to be able to talk to him about and, and pull from a variety of examples that he's had as an assistant coach and as obviously a head coach with the Packers and Favre. You know, Favre threw a lot of picks too and uh, didn't always play excellent under center. And he's a very interesting guy when you sit down with Sherman. A very impressive, obviously an NFL pedigree, background. Been in the college game before he got to the National Football League at A&M, UCLA, Holy Cross, Tulane. He's actually at Pitt. He's asleep in the weight room, he told me, because he, he couldn't afford an apartment. But he does a lot of things. He's a former English teacher. He likes to write. He said it's therapeutic, so why he writes the letters. When he was in Green Bay, he wrote a local article every week for the newspaper. He's someone who you could say he, he gets the big picture of things and in recruiting that's everything because when you can walk into a kid's home and say we need you you will play you'll play well and i know as well as anybody in the big 12 how to get to the national football league come and join our team and that's what he's going to do as recruiting season is, is heating up and signing day you know comes around this february under two and a half to play but as you well know it comes down to a fan base and an administration having patience. You know, it's a, a short window for many of these coaches to win. And right or wrong, that is the way it's uh, it's held. The standards are held in, in uh, college football. You're right, and especially with all the money that's floating around now sure. and, and the salaries that coordinators are making, let alone head coaches. So, yeah, it's a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately type business. And he knows that better than anybody because in the National Football League, it could be three bad games in a row right. and you're gone, let alone three bad seasons. But I think when you look at A&M and their history, the class. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty. 
third down. The class that they have as a university, as a fan base, they're going to give them a little time. Well, they get frustrated, and I'm sure the message boards will be rolling tonight. But out of all the programs that I've gotten to be around, and you as well covering the Big 12, this is a respectful program. They're going to give him his time to, to right this ship and get his players in to run his offense and, and his schemes. Well, bottom line is he's in an unbelievable state for, for great players. That's and, right. you know, whether or not you get the top player at a particular position coming out of the state of Texas, they'll throw him out of bounds. It'll stop the clock with 144. If you get the third, the fourth, or the fifth, that's still the best player in a lot of other states. That's right. That, that's the fun part of recruiting. I mean, it, we've covered a bunch of teams this year, and, you know, if you're Kansas State, you've got to recruit out of state a lot. You go down to Texas. You go to California if you can. You go to Oklahoma and try to recruit a few players and athletes that you don't have in your home state. Texas A&M, their entire staff, all nine guys, they don't have to leave the state unless it's some sort of family connection to the university. They are recruiting Texas and Texas only, and that will revive the program. It won't even be that hard, and it won't take that long. But up front... You can recruit receivers and skill position players to score time out, touchdowns. Kansas State, that's their third and last time out of the half. You can this recruit, is a 30 second timeout. You can recruit skill position players to make immediate impacts, but if you can't protect up front, you don't have a chance. And there are not too many 18 year old Orlando Paces laying around that can start as true freshmen and, and dominate. And they've got some freshmen that are playing on the offensive line and gaining great experience, but physically, They've never had to go up against it. Think about what they've seen. They've seen defensive linemen that are probably 5'10", 195 pounds their entire career. Now they're going up against freaks of nature on the defensive line. So just give them a little time up front. They'll do all right. So minute 44 to play after the timeout. It's fourth and four. Check that fourth and six for Kansas State. So they'll punt it away. And that will roll into the end zone. Tune in to FCS next Saturday. We return to Manhattan right here in Kansas. Kansas State will host Colorado, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Catch exclusive Big 12 football all season long right here on Fox College Sports. And Kansas now leading Colorado 30-27 with 12.24 to go. K-State's uh, most points in a Big 12 game since 1999. Well, you have to go back to 1999. They had 66 in that game against Missouri. They won 66 nothing, And that was their largest margin of victory in Big 12 play. It's going to be fun to come back next week. I've never been to Kansas before this season. I've been here three times already with, with our crew, and it's been a blast every time. And there's going to be a good football game next week. Colorado, it'll be fun to see how this one turns out against Kansas. But they'll be able to move the football and run the football. Rodney Stewart. It's a big time back, he's fast, flashy, receivers, Seamus is back, playing Scotty McKnight, sure-handed guy. Defensively, they do a nice job with their linebacking core. It'll be a fun matchup, I think physically I'd give the edge of Kansas State, obviously after watching them tonight. But anything can happen any given Saturday. And the catch is made and a pickup of one, 120 to play and the clock continues to roll. Brings up a third down and nine. Dan Hill in the slot. You see him on the top of your screen right there, number 17, third down specialist. Johnson said he loves going to Dan Hill. He's been his biggest fan as he became the starting quarterback. And a catch made and a first down for Texas A&M. So Kansas State takes on Colorado next week, and we'll have it for you here on Fox College Sports. And that will come your way once again at 11.30 next Saturday, 11.30 Central Time next Saturday. A tough season for Coach Hawkins and his crew. Obviously, Cody benching him last week after the Texas performance and now with the new signal caller under center. We need to see that offense and, and what they dial up next weekend here in Manhattan. It's thrown out of bounds with 22 seconds to play.
Well, when you get in the locker room tonight and your, your Coach Schneider, I want to tell you guys how proud of him you are. Came back from a tough loss last week, forgot about it, came to work, put in the extra day's work on Friday, had an easy practice, but had pads on, focused, sharp, crisp. And on the other side, your Coach Sherman, you're saying, take a look at that score. Let's get to the truth of it, which is we got beat up at the line of scrimmage. We did not protect the football. And let's move on and get back to the way we know how to play sound football, the way we did the last few weeks against Arkansas, against Oklahoma State, and see if we can take those principles and carry them on, because this is a long season. And for the freshmen, you're no longer freshmen. You're sophomores. Time to grow up, time to play ball. It's a physical game. You're going to get hit in the mouth, but how are you going to respond? And it'll be fun to watch them next week. they got a tough one at Texas Tech. And uh, that quarterback, I'm sure Johnson, as you see him complete another pass out there to, to Mr. Easy, who we'd love to talk about all night long. He's going to be motivated. And that'll do it. Bill Snyder and the Kent State Wildcats roll over Texas A&M. 62 to 14. Bill Snyder will visit with Sam momentarily. Nice thing about this win is that it is a community win. This entire place, whether it's a restaurant, a hotel, everybody had their Kansas State gear on today. They were ready to go support this program, support this team. And they all feel they've got a little part of this program, and as they should. Aggieville's going off right now, I'm sure. Campus is excited. Midway through the season, a big, big 12 win for Kansas State. Sam, go ahead. Coach, obviously last week, huge disappointing loss, and then you come back and win in this fashion. How big is this for your program? Well, it's better than the alternative, isn't it? Uh, I, you know, it's just another step. Uh, we, uh, I'm proud of our youngsters. I thought they, uh, in the first half, we really played well. And when you play well, then you deserve to have good things happen to you. Texas A&M, I, as, as I know, is a better football team than they were tonight. They're going through the same kind of growing pains as we are. Uh, you know, last week they played extremely well against Oklahoma State. They just didn't play as well today. And coupled with the fact that we did play pretty well, I think has gave us a chance. Coach, you've been going back and forth between these two quarterbacks all season. What did you see that you liked tonight? Well, uh, we didn't throw any interceptions. I always like that. Uh, they managed the game relatively well early in the ball game. A little later, it was, you know, it got a little iffy. But, uh, you know, they just managed the ball game well, threw the ball all right. They played, they played reasonably well. You get to go home and be with the family just like you like it, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you, dear, very much. Thank you. Back up to you guys. All right, Sam, good job. And 62 to 14, our final tonight. And we'll take a quick time out when we come back, a, a look at many highlights for the Wildcats. So our final 62-14, Kansas State.